All right, now we have officially begun. Again, my name is Rob Provence. Welcome again to part B of how to market, sell, and shoot weddings for maximum results and profits. Um, tonight's webinar will cover, in a, just to give you a brief overview, we're going to talk about posing, shooting at weddings. I'm going to talk about lighting. I'm going to talk about equipment. I'm going to talk about and get into some Photoshop workflow. Now we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, so I'm going to try and cruise through this at a fairly steady pace. And uh, I just want to remind you guys uh, that uh, what I'm talking about is what works for me. It's my style of uh, shooting weddings. Now the last part, part A of this series, was all to do with marketing. So if you have any questions to do with marketing, Sean's probably going to either put you to the very end of the line and we'll get to you if we got time um, or answer it himself because he's a pretty knowledgeable dude although to look at him you wouldn't think he's got an IQ above a, <laughs> a thumbnail I'm joking I I love you Sean but, uh, you're so mean to me <laughs> uh, that was funny uh, <laughs> but anyways so I'm also gonna I just shot a wedding a couple of weeks ago and I got the proofs on my computer so I'm gonna I'm, I would love to be able to just sit down and just cruise through them all and show you each and every shot that I did in that wedding. Uh, I have several here if I have time. I really doubt that I will, but if I have time, I'll go over two of them. Because I want to also show you how when I shoot a wedding, it's not a cookie-cutter thing. There are some things that are standardized. Uh, there's you know some things that are crossed over from event to event to event that are pretty consistent. But uh, a lot of uh, stuff is very much what I call freestyle, uh, and it really is something that is developed from, I believe, years and years and years of experience. So you know, it's something I can't, I can't really put in any other way and explain to you and show to you other than to say that experience is one of the most valuable tools, one of the most valuable skill sets. I don't really think talent's got a lot to do with it. In the, for the most part, I think that uh, experience plays a huge, giant role, and I've noticed that in my 28 years of shooting so far, that uh, I just get more confident, I become stronger and better, and a better communicator, and 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 all that good stuff. So, so let's start. You know, so like I said, tonight's all to do with uh, technical stuff. We're going to get into technical equipment and lighting and posing. So I just want to give you a brief overview of exactly what it is I use when I shoot a wedding. I have two Nikon D700s. I love the D700s. When they first came out, uh, the camera store guy down in Toronto sent me one right away with a 24 to 70 and, a, and an SB900 flash. He didn't. He just put it in a box. He sent it to me. He said, "Here, try this." Uh, he said, "You know, I was doing a, a five-day course at Niagara School of Imaging that week, and he said, just bring it to the course. You got to try this camera out." And I never sent it back to him. I sent him my credit card. I absolutely love that camera. Got rid of what I was using at the time, and I actually bought a second body. So, twenty-four to seventy is the same one he sent me. I, I used that one. I had already owned the seventy to two hundred two point eight. It's an older model. Absolutely, it's 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 worn. It's just literally got you know if I was to put it as a car it would have like uh, 480,000 miles on it it's just worn right down to rubbers falling off but you know what I'm a big believer in good glass good glass to me is the the most important thing and that's why I bought recently the 14 to 24 2.8 so we're looking at a fairly fairly expensive investment in lenses right there and then around the range of uh, five, six thousand dollars for those three lenses. But if you can get them, get them. If uh, you know, in order of priority, that's how I've got them listed. If you can only get one, get to twenty-four to seventy, and then add on the seventy to two hundred. And then if you can uh, get the extra coin, go for the twenty-four, fourteen to twenty-four. If you're a Canon shooter, the seventeen to thirty-five. I think it's a 17 to 25 f4 is one of the best lenses I have ever seen. So you want to get a Canon. Uh, equivalent to the 14 to 24. Not as good as a Nikon. Not as good. Not as beefy looking either. This 14 to 24 is awesome looking, uh, and, and um, it, it's just incredibly sharp. Uh, I also have a 60 mil 2.8 macro that I bought off of another photographer from the uh, forum, 
and uh, it was actually Julie Judy Cormier, and uh, she sold it for like uh, I don't two hundred bucks or something like that. I use it mostly for close-ups. And I also recently acquired a D7000 Nikon. I bought it mostly for the high-def video because I'm incorporating high-def video into my weddings. Uh, it's kind of a new thing. I personally believe it is absolutely the future, and it is going to be more and more relevant. And because uh, I just I know it's going to be the buzz and all the rage. So, are all of those uh, Nikon lenses? You They're all have... all Nikon. Yeah, those are all Nikon, right from the Nikon factory. I hear good stuff though from uh, I think it's Tamron and uh, Sigma, you know they're not as as well made but just about as sharp. So my lights and stuff are I have four SB 800s and uh, they are just totally just right up there with that 70 to 200 worn out with mileage. They still kick. They still work. The SB 900 I have the one that I got from Jeff when he sent it up to me. Uh, I use it as well. I have two reflectors that I bring with me on a wedding. I have three pocket wizards. I have pictures of all these I'm going to show you in a minute. I use the built-in slaves in the Nikons. They have built-in optical slaves. Uh, I use those far more than I use TTL. I rarely use TTL uh, for uh, off-camera flash, but I do use it a little bit. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I have an index card for uh, reference on a wedding. I'll show you that. I also shoot 100% JPEG. I set my camera half resolution. Uh, I bring permanent ink markers in my camera bag, and I bring two blank black poster cards or a couple of old frame samples, prints that are mounted on a black foam core. I just bring the prints, and, and I'll show you what I do with those in a minute. So here's another toy. Uh, is It's kind of a, a video cam brace, a couple hundred bucks. And it's uh, something that uh, rests over my shoulder and goes on my chest. And if I'm shooting video, it kind of stabilizes it. I notice that video really needs to be uh, mounted of, on something to, to really slow down that jitteriness and that uh, shakiness that you uh, I don't have to uh, work with as much when I'm doing still photography. Now you'll notice I don't I did not put a tripod on there. I I never 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 shoot with a tripod on a wedding. Uh, there's one in my trunk. I mean, it's there if I ever need it, but the only time I ever really use a tripod is if it's low light towards sunset and I'm, I'm doing uh, family portraits and I'm dragging that shutter uh, to down to like a 30th of a second or a 60th of a second. But generally speaking, uh, I, I never use a tripod on a wedding. I'm, I'm all about being fast, light, on my feet, moving, 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 moving. So here's the uh, latest development, this uh, D7000, and I've got the 14 to 24 on there, um, and I've got that uh, video brace that I use, and uh, I, I'm using it, again, to explore with uh, incorporating some fusion video into my weddings. Uh, if you're not doing fusion, I would seriously uh, urge you to at least start testing and playing uh, get a little video cam if you have to, get a point and shoot cam, just start shooting 10, 20 second snippets. Uh, I think it's going to be very, very essential. That's just my own opinion. So, Now, when I'm getting ready for a wedding, you have a question, John? Yep, a couple quick questions. Um, what's the name brand for that brace? Oh. And also, um, are you actually wearing that brace or do you have like a second or a third person to do that? Um, well, my last wedding that I shot, I brought that with me it's three weeks ago, and I had my assistant do most of the video. Uh, but it's there, and I told him, I said, look, I'm going to grab this sucker, and I'm going to shoot some video at some point in time, so give it up, you know. And uh, so I'm kind of figuring that out. I can see an assistant doing uh, a lot of that, but I like playing with it myself, you know. I've got this inner movie cinema guy that wants to shoot this stuff, so... I don't remember the brand. I, I'm sorry. I wish I. I can't see that close. It's all. Oh well. It was. It was two hundred fifty dollars. It wasn't expensive. So. Okay. Uh, one other question. You might be coming up to it, but uh, Jeff uh, is asking about uh, uh, why you shoot half resolution. Oh, I knew that question was going to come up. Can I yeah, get to that yeah. when I do the Photoshop part? Sure. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'd like to do that later when I do the Photoshop shop uh, workflow. So when I, uh, I'm very anal about preparing for my weddings. If I'm not prepared, ready to go, 100% uh, organized by Friday, I just won't sleep well that night. So 
I make sure I got all batteries I need. I use uh, regular batteries for my flashes. I have a lot of batteries for my cameras. I make sure they're all 100% charged. I'm all organized. Everything's ready to go. I do not like getting ready the day of. I like to be ready the day before. It's just me, but you know I don't want to have to think about it. I have a battery checker. If I have a set of batteries from a previous uh, wedding, I would say last if I did a wedding the week before, I'll pop the batteries out of the flash and I'll put them in the battery tester. If they look like they're questionable, they're out. Uh, so I want fresh batteries and I bring a lot of spares with me as well, just in case. Here's my setup. There's my D700 with the SB900 and I have the diffusion on top of the flash. That's how I show up at a wedding, right there. Well, I actually, and I have, I have the 70 to 200 on the second D700. Uh, if you don't have a second body, you just have the flash in your, uh, sorry, uh, the lens in your camera bag, obviously. But uh, normally I have two cameras strung around me, and that's how I show up. I have one camera bag, and I have uh, the 24 to 70 with the SB900 on the on the Nikon D700, and that's my camera bag. Now, you can see my camera bag. Look right there. <laughs> Look at the wear and tear. It's like it's, that's it. This 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 camera bag's going away, so uh, I'm going to be uh, getting a new one soon. I think I'm going to get a think tank bag uh, on wheels. Uh, James has one, and he's kind of convinced me it's the way to go. Uh, it's handy. It's got wheels, and you just lug it around, and then it substitutes. I like this. It substitutes. You can use it as a sitting stool. So so there it is. There's uh, how I show up at a wedding. Not with jeans, though. I, I, wear, I always wear a, uh, a suit without a tie. There's my flashes. Okay, I've got two SB800s that are in the case, okay, and I got two that are on the stands, and I've got the SB900, of course, on my camera. So when I want to do off-camera flash, uh, oh, by the way, the, the one on the left would normally have a pocket wizard on it right there. I forgot to just for the picture, I forgot to actually uh, just put it in the picture. But both those stands have two pocket wizards, receivers plugged into the SB900s. They are all on on the stands are all on manual, okay, and they're on lowest power setting. I put them on lowest power settings because when I do a test, I don't want to output on full power. I just want to want to get the flashes working. Once they're working, then I turn the power up, and it's just the usual push down one arrow, push down, and it goes to the next setting, which is full power. And then I, you know, assuming I'm going full power or whatever I think I'm going to need, so uh, I set those at that, uh, so it's ready to go. Those two handheld flashes, I have them on TTL, uh, and I'll show you why in a minute. There's me and my reflector. I bought two of these years ago from uh, Silver Lake Backdrops, and they go into those blue uh, cases, which both have broken zippers now, so uh, the zippers don't close. And they're called Panelite, Lastolite. I think it's called Panelite. And again, I got them from Silver Lake. And they're absolutely awesome. I think they were like, I don't know, 80 bucks or 100 bucks or something like that each. They were a good, good value. They're huge. They're like seven feet tall. They're wide. They're massive. And they're exactly what I want because uh, I love using reflectors. Uh, there's my 24 to, sorry, 14 to 24. It's a big wide angle lens, one of the sweetest lenses I've ever, ever got my hands on. I love using super wide shots. And there's my 70 to 200. Typically, that's how I hold it. Just thought I'd show you that. Uh, if you'll notice, my elbows are in, and I've braced the camera. Uh, you're holding it such a way so that you could squeeze the camera and get that uh, get that exposure down with minimal shake. Uh, there's the macro 60 mil macro lens. Uh, there's an old lens, 50 mil 1.4 Nikon that I never never use anymore. But I wanted to show it to you because I wanted to point out that um, if I had to shoot a wedding, I, you know, I want to urge you guys if you're just starting, if you're just starting, don't focus so much on getting the right equipment just yet. Focus on learning how to work with people, how to work with posing, how to work with lighting, and how to get dynamic, uh, high impact images and giving people a very, very uh, enthusiastic and, and high-energy experience. That is going to go much further than anything else. If I had to shoot a wedding, I, would, I could easily use just about any camera, <coughs> excuse me, 
And one point, this lens here, one lens, and I, I would just get amazing shots. I know I would because it's really not so much the camera. I like the versatility of having all the lenses, um, but uh, I just want to make that point so you understand it. If you've been at it a long time uh, and you're kind of like not really, you're noticing that business is down, uh, you, you, you got to look at what is it that people want. I talked about this in the first part of this webinar series, what it is that people want. So really the imagery is very, very critical as well. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll notice on this picture I've got a, a lens shade, um, and I'm a big, big believer in lens shades. I don't use any filters other than a polarizer, which I use occasionally, but I don't put UV filters on my lenses or anything like that. I just like being pure and clean and straight up, but lens shades to me are absolutely essential. All right, so here's a picture of me holding an SB900, which I popped off the camera, okay? And you can see the camera, uh, on-camera flash is popped up as well. Um, oh, I got ahead of myself here. Yeah, okay, you know what? I'm going to show you this in detail in a minute. I'm going through the equipment here. I'll get back to that. Just hang on. Uh, this is my flash card bag. It's a little low pro. Uh, it goes in my pant pocket. I never put that in the camera case. I never put it anywhere else. It's close to me. If anybody, you know, wanted to try and rip that away from me, they'd get a fight, and uh, I would, you know, they, them and their army would, would have to come at me because this, I, what would happen? I mean, just what would happen, right? So I always have a lot of spare ones. I still got a lot of one gigabyte cards. I got some four gigabyte cards and a two, and I generally use about, Actually, I got a four and a two and a bunch of ones. I use the four and the two. I fill those two up. By the end of the day, I may have to go to a, a couple of the ones, and that's all I use. I do have a, a white balance disky thing. can't even remember the name of it, but it's uh, for creating custom white balances. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I got lazy over the years, and what I've been doing is I use my white balance that I've set up for my studio flashes. I, I guess I was at a wedding years ago, and I just either got lazy or forgot. I took a picture, set it on the uh, stored white balance from the studio, and the results look good. I mean, it looks look good. So I don't do as many white balances as maybe I should, but i got to say that the results are there. So I'm, I'm working with the white balance that's already stored. But I do have that with me. So I also have my good trusted Minolta. Again, it's got more miles than my 70 to 200. This sucker is 20 years old or whatever. It's just worn right out, but it still works like a charm. I use it quite a bit on weddings for measuring off-camera flash. And I also have a hoodman for those bright, sunny, sunny days when I want to I want to chimp on the back of my camera and I can't see for all the sun that's coming at me. And, and I just, I love this thing for uh, for that purpose. It's a very, very handy tool. And I also have an electronic cable, which um, I it's with me. And if I have to use it for a longer exposure, that means I've got to get the tripod. Uh, but it's in my camera case, and it's the, one of those things I don't even know that I, I use once a year, if that at all. But I do have it with me, and it's uh, kind of a cool thing because it's electronic, and uh, it's made by Nikon. It was like 80 bucks or something like that. And finally, I have, and have been playing with lately in the last year, uh, polarizing and... Uh, this is uh, a lens that it's, I think it's a 77 that fits on the 24 to 70 lens and the 70 to 200 lens. So I could put it on either or, but I would only see myself really, and I have only used it on the 24 to 70. Uh, I don't think there's a polarizer for the 14 because that lens is so big and fat, right? Uh, but uh, for the 24 to 70, when I see certain situations where I want to play and pull out the blue sky, I see my, my idea here. As if I can do it in Photoshop, I'll do it in Photoshop. But what what a polarizer can do with not just deepening the blue sky and cutting out some of the glare. <coughs> sorry, these are some effects that you know are done at the time you're taking the picture. So that's why I like using a polarizer, only on occasion. Now, when I'm shooting with my uh, SB900, if I'm doing candids or uh, a whole bunch of other situations like the uh, bridal party coming down or leaving the church. This is how I pretty much set up my camera. I don't have, I don't have any uh, Gary Fongbongs or, or any reflectors off the flash. 
I just go with the one that Nikon made, and it's it does a pretty darn good job. And I love it aimed up like this. If there's a nice ceiling, I use the environment as best as I can in order to uh, get the best results. Hold on one second. I just got to cough and clear my throat. Hold on. <coughs> I've been fighting a cold. Um, so that's what I use quite a bit. Now, sometimes I'll take it off and aim it down just to get a little more light, or I'll aim it down halfway like this, and I'll keep the... Uh, I'll keep the diffuser on it, or I'll take the diffuser off and I'll just shoot it right up into the ceiling. So there are times, and actually quite a bit, I do this quite a bit. It just gets rid of that 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 flash look, and it's really soft. And I blend it in with the uh, uh, the ambient light that's already in the room. Now I'll do this whenever I see that it needs a little bit of extra kick. Uh, I will often turn the compensation down to like a half, two thirds, or a full f-stop just to give a little bit of extra kicker into the fill. Now, you got to know when to do that, and that comes with experience and personal taste. you got to know when it's when do you need a little extra fill. Sometimes I want that subject to go really dark and the background is going to overpower, and you just, you know, it's whatever works, right? So that's just something that's sort of subjective. It's like a chef question. Yeah, Rob, do you ever use a uh, like an index card or the little white flippy tab thing that pulls out of there? Um, no, I never do because I'm really happy with that diffuser. So yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I think I might have at one time, but I'm really using this all the time consistently. It's fast, it's easy, and uh, it works. Mostly it works. So here's a picture of me. Speaking about index cards, this is uh, one of those recipe cards or index cards. Uh, I have one of these prepped the day before the wedding. I have the bride and groom's name on the top, just their first names, and I have their cell phone number just below that, and I have the pertinent data like the time, where I'm going, uh, the bride's home, the name of the ceremony, the name of the officiant. I want to know who the officiant is, so when I meet them, I can say, hi, uh, hi, Reverend O'Donnell, how are you? My name's Rob Provence. I'm the official photographer. Do you have a few spare moments? And I can remember the names of the parents and the family members and the bridal party, best man, maid of honor, and if there's little children. And if there's other stuff, like if the say there's something special, like, okay, bride wants a picture of her aunt from New Zealand, I'll just make a note. Or bride wants a group shot after the ceremony. So, you know, I'll make a note on that in point form on my card. And I just, I bring that card with me uh, on the wedding day. And I, it's my cheat card. Now, when I'm shooting a wedding, uh, I'm all over the place, man. I'm climbing. I'm climbing every place. I'm climbing walls. I'm climbing uh, staircases. Uh, I'm getting up on top of things. I'm getting up on top of kitchen counters and uh, I'm shooting low. Uh, you can't be afraid to try really creative angles if it's going to make the picture work that much better. Plus, when they see you doing this, they get all excited and go, wow, this guy's really Wow, look at that. He's just, wow, you put on a bit of a show for him. I'll get on the ground and, uh, you know, just wreak havoc on my suit. That's okay. I, I, I buy cheap suits. I just buy one a year. I'll get on the ground and I'll shoot up like that. I'll shoot up like that, especially when I'm doing the huddle of the bridal party coming around me, and I'll put the wide-angle lens on. And I just use my flash. Actually, I'll tilt it towards the people. I won't have it aimed up like that. I just forgot to do that for this shot. But typically, this pose here typically is for the huddle of the bridal party most light to me I want it to be natural most light to me is uh, whatever is is inherent in the scene and in the situation uh, to the best of my ability I like working with what is there and it throws a bit of a loop and I think this is where some of the old school photographers get stuck you know they kind of like well no this is the way I did it 1988 and that's just and you get you follow a pattern and you get stuck in a rut uh, so I like working with what's there and and I know you know guys like Jerry Jonas like to do that too he's a naturally gifted photographer who can do that I just uh, love uh, watching the guy speak and, and learning from him he has just so many good ideas there's a picture of my daughter who assisted me on a wedding last year and I, I did this picture with those two big reflectors that I bought from uh, Silver Lake and uh, I was taking pictures of the uh, of the bridesmaids. What happened was the ceremony had started. They were sitting down having supper. I had completely forgot to get a shot of each bridesmaid. I always, always, always get a shot of the bridesmaids individually. So I just went up to the table. I said, girls, 
can you all come outside for five minutes? Oh, yeah. And it was between meals. And they did. They said, yeah, let's go follow Rob. And they went outside. And we, uh, a bunch of them came out. And they, we started having this little outdoor kind of social hour and taking pictures. It was a blast. So anyways, that's how I typically do a lot of my portraits, right there with two reflectors. And I'm doing portraiture. Typically, almost 98% of the time, I will shoot with the 70 to 200 at 2.8. Okay, 70 to 70 to 200. I try and get it out to 200 as best I can at 2.8. Now, if I'm doing a large family with rows, I'll try and get it down to f4 or 5.6. But I generally don't have to. So, and there's the effect you can see in this picture here, <coughs> where uh, you can see a lot of the reflection coming up into uh, into their faces uh, from the reflectors. And there it is. This is from my wedding last three, three. Uh, well, Valentine's Day weekend. This is a shot of the uh, one of the bridesmaids. Seventy to two hundred, two point eight. You can see the reflector on the bottom of her eyes. And that's how I shoot a lot of my portraiture. Um, it's basically like that using the reflector. I just love using a reflector. And here's a, here's another wedding. It's just the grandma and grandpa, right? This is just cookie cutter stuff. I know this is this is what I call the mandatory stuff. I shoot all the uh, formals right after the ceremony. I get the parents and grandparents done. Twenty minutes, they're done. So this is how I shoot it. We go somewhere in open shade. I love open shade. And in this particular scene here, this was a town. Uh, 80 miles from where I live, so I wasn't too familiar with it, and it was a hot, bright, sunny day. We did not have uh, a lot of places to go to, except for this one little tiny, tiny area. So I said, well, let's go. There's, there's all kinds of sun blotches coming through and all that, but that's fine. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh, and when I'm shooting the grandparents like that, I always get a shot of the grandparents alone as well. And that, again, this is just another wedding, uh, the reflector, open shade, 70 to 200, 2.8. And another one, this is early last spring, there's barely any leaves on the trees, and you can see the same results, 70 to 200, 2.8. Okay, here's another kind of a unusual situation if I'm uh, using the reflectors, uh, sometimes with, uh, if I'm experimenting and doing some bizarre stuff with a, with a lamp. You could see the reflector right under here. Again, right under her eye, right there. You could see the specular highlights a little bit. So, okay, so that's what I use a lot. The most, the bulk, if I'm using or uh, manipulating light other than just going with what's already there, I will use the reflectors. Off camera flash, I want to talk about that right now off-camera flash. James talks about this. He says this really well, and I agree with him 100%. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of off-camera flash on his weddings. I don't either, And and but when you use them they and you do it properly, it just adds that, that extra, you know, 2% of the images have that off-camera flash look, and they're just like, wow, wow. That alone will make, you know, assuming, let's assume the rest of the images are pretty decent too. I mean, they can't all be crap, and all of a sudden you got these really nice off-camera flash shots. You got to have a pretty good uh, overall, uh, some good selection of candids, a good selection of photojournalistic stuff, and some cool angles and everything else. And then you throw in the off-camera flash shots, and they just really stand out. So, usually, but not always, but usually, I would say about ninety percent of the time, my first opportunity to get off-camera flash shot is at the at the church. So I get to the church. 45 minutes before the ceremony, and I've had a discussion with the bride and groom four, three, four weeks prior, and we've gone over the times. You know, I tell them when I'm showing up at the bride's home, we go over discussion, we talk about issues that might get in the way, and we have a good solid plan. You know, I want them to be organized so that they can just let the day go, and they can be attend their own wedding instead of trying to worry about everything. So, so I show up. At the church, I'm there five minutes before. The guys have not showed up yet. There's my assistant. Um, uh, what's his name? You know, um, Travis. <laughs> I forgot his name. Sorry, sorry, Travis. Travis is, uh, we, his nickname is Radar because he just knows what you're thinking. You know, you just turn around and go, Travis, can you get me? And he's there. He's got it. 
So I have, you can see right here, there's one stand with an SB800, uh, and there's another one over here. And I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, okay, today's really, really bright. Sunny 16, you've heard of it. I'm going to turn these suckers up to full power. Okay, So I turn them up, and uh, it didn't work. It was too bright. Flashes are too close, so I have to turn it down a bit. Plus, I mostly have to dial down the shutter speed. You notice how the, the ambient light all of a sudden, all of a sudden the ambient light got darker. And I can go as fast as 250th of a second if I want to really darken the ambient uh, light. Now, just for those who don't know what ambient means, it's all the light except for the light from the two flashes. Okay, So it's all the other light. So here's a shot that I managed to get of the actual bridal party when they did show up. And, you know, we got uh, Mr. RCMP dude way off to the left who's uh, in his full regalia. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys. So it's a nice-sized bridal party. And I shot this um, in front of the church like I typically do. I want to show the story uh, of, you know, this is the location where the wedding's happening and wide-angle lens. And then, for some reason, I don't normally do this, but I, I had the guys come in close, the best man and the groom. But this, I think it's really cool. And um, I had a, I grabbed a, an, an SB800 from a camera bag, turned it on to Optical Slave, and put a soft uh, diffuser on it, and popped it just below me, so it has that spook lighting effect. So it's lighting the best man and the, uh, and the groom. So remember, we got a flash coming from over here, and we got a flash coming from over here, and then I got that third flash coming from the bottom right here, and it's it's being picked up from these over here from opt the optical slave. So you know, and there's a super wide shot brought them in closer to the church. Uh, two lights again. We got a flash over here and a flash over here. You can see it actually right here. You see it in the actual picture. And uh, it's uh, lighting them up, lighting them up for that off-camera flash look. So, and I like putting the sun right in the picture too. And I will do that as many times as I can get away with it. I just think it's an awesome effect. So I do that quite a bit. So, just to continue on with off-camera flash, you can see it in this picture here. Uh, you can see the actual. Hold on here. There it is. There's the stand. Now, I have the two stands I have, by the way. One is an 8-footer, and one is a 13-footer. And I, they're from uh, Pulsey Buff. You know, you can buy them. They're re reasonably priced. They're air-cushioned. And uh, I don't think the 13-footer is air-cushioned because I don't think they can build that into a stand that tall. Uh, but anyways, I got the 13-footer. Question. Yeah, a couple of quick questions. Uh, do you uh, work with modifiers on your off-camera flash at the wedding? No, well, just one, but I'll show you in a minute. Okay. And uh, what's your general working ISO? Do uh, you have like a rule for that, or? Uh, my for all the shots you've seen so far, I'm outside. I'm 200 ISO. So yeah, it's like you know, I'm, it's bright, it's sunny. I don't need to crank up the ISO. Inside, I would crank that ISO up to uh, 800, 1500, 2000, 3000, 4000. Easy, easy, easy. Whatever easy. it takes. Whatever it takes, I'll do it easy. The camera can handle it. So, but I'll, I'll talk about that again a little bit later. So, okay. So we got uh, this wedding here. This is from last spring, and we're at the hall. Had a few extra minutes to get a couple of off-camera flash shots to show the hall. So I cranked that light right up there, and you can see it coming down. And there's another flash off-camera. Right here, you could tell because the bride, uh, you know, she's illuminated on her left. You could see it along her left right here, and that's uh, the second flash. And I've got the pocket wizard, by the way, on the camera for all these shots, okay? The only time I put a camera, a flash on the camera to, uh, to mix in with the off-camera flash is when I'm in the hall because it's so much darker. But typically, just the pocket wizard is on the hot shoe. And boom, I do a test. It looks good. And that's what I ended up with in this particular shot here. So again, I don't use the off-camera flash all day long. It's when I see that it's relevant and it's going to really uh, kick up a few of the images and add a lot of zest, uh, that's when uh, that's when I uh, use it. So, All right, back to this image I showed you earlier, but I never got to explain what I was doing. 
what I'm doing here, this is a technique that I use occasionally, and I'll show you my settings for the Nikon. Um, I'll, go, I'll go quick because it's a Nikon proprietary thing, I think. I, maybe the Canons can do it. I'm not sure. Um, just a minute here. I'm trying to... Just not as well. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. According to Sean, the Canons are not as, not as good. According to Sean, Canons are crap. Is that what you said? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just send the hate mail my way. Yeah, you, you all know I don't feel that way. Um, anyways, uh, what I've done here is I'm using the TTL system, uh, that uh, the creative lighting system, and I'm using the on-camera flash in order to, if I need to get a quick, really quick off-camera flash look, uh, I pop the SB900 off the camera and I pop up the little inboard flash. Okay, and I get this kind of thing. If I wanted to just get a detail shot, uh, this is actually from my last wedding three weeks ago. Same idea. You can see the nice shadowing, the nice modeling effect uh, with the flash, the way it's illuminating, uh, and just kind of creating nice shadows. It's being filled in by the on-camera flash, and uh, it works. And, and here's a shot that I got uh, last year. To, uh, there's the guy playing guitar, so I, I just took the SB900, lifted it up far away from me, and boom, I got nice portrait lighting on his face, mixing in a, a bit of ambient as well, which is very kind of warm, but that's okay. I mean, heck, it, was, it works. It's just a side shot. And here's another s example of a quick and dirty off-camera flash. You know, I just it was kind of raining a bit, and I just wanted to get a quick shot of this guy with this cigar in his mouth that looked really cool. So wide angle, popped the SB900 off the hot shoe, and uh, turned it on to the setting that it'll become the secondary flash, pop up the on-camera flash like this here, okay? There's my Nikon D700, pop up the on-camera flash. There's the menu. If you go down to the pencil uh, on the left, this is the third one down, custom setting menu, go down to bracketing and flash, and then from there go to flash control for built-in flash, and then down below that, even deeper, is there's four options, TTL, manual, repeating flash, which I have no idea what it means. I used to know, don't know anymore because I obviously don't use it. And then commander mode. Commander mode is what I have the camera set to when I pop up that flash so that I don't have to go set it on a wedding. It's already set. Okay, and there's commander mode, built-in flash. It's, it's saying, well, what do you want? So I put the mode, see the mode, TTL, TTL, TTL. Now I typically only use one group, uh, so, but if I need two, you'll notice one, you know, group A is, I, I, I meant to say I only use one camera off, like if I'm doing this technique. But if I have uh, one camera on group A, one camera on group B, you know, one's at minus three and one's at plus three in case there's a variance. So, and you'll notice the compensation, minus three stops for the built-in flash. Typically, that's what I do. If I need a little extra fill, I'll bring it up to minus two, minus one and a half. Okay. Now, I find it does a pretty good job, even at minus three, of filling it in nicely. Now, just to warn you guys, if you end up doing a lot of this, it's going to really suck the battery power a lot. So you might have to get some spare batteries. So, so this is the setting my camera on, my flash on camera is set to. If I need a quick shot off camera flash, just with one flash off camera. Uh, I could do two or three, actually. I could grab those extra flashes. They're always there in my case. I can have my assistant hold a, a third one. So I've got one off camera to my left. I've got my assistant off to the right. So I've got three flashes working. The on-camera one, left and right, and away we go. And it's, it's a really amazing system. Okay? And sometimes I get wonky and just crazy. This is my wedding from uh, three weeks ago. Uh, two SB900s that I had inside my camera case. I turn it, they were both on optical slave. So I just popped them down. We're waiting for the bridal party to come. We had, they got married at two. They got married at the, re, at the hall the, where the reception is and they got ready there too. So we didn't have to go far, but after the ceremony, they did a receiving line. We did a couple formals of the parents and uh, grandparents and family. And then we left, we got the limo, we booted out to the park, right in the snow and everything. And that's the wedding I want to show you, by the way, when we get through to all this. And uh, 
and then uh, we went downtown, we went to a pub, went in the street, went to a back alley, all like, we're talking like 15 below zero, but there was no wind, so it was okay, and it was sunny out. So we got tons and tons of pictures outside, and we were done early, and I said, well, let's go back to the hall, we'll do some shots in the lobby. I had no idea what I was going to do. We got there ahead of them, and I just popped these two flashes onto the coffee table. Hey, and there you see, they're over here, and there's Travis. I did a quick test, 2000 ISO at F4, uh, and I had on my camera the ESP900. I took the diffuser off, and I tilted the head sort of upwards and turned it towards those two flashes so that they would pick up the uh, flash and fire, okay? And that's what I ended up with, so... Uh, this is a small proof. It looks a little pixelated, but that's just because I, I wrote about this in the newsletter recently, and I just went and grabbed it from the newsletter. So you get the idea. The lighting works. The lighting works. The pose works, too. I had a lot of fun posing these guys. I didn't know what I was going to do when they showed up. I had no idea. I just had this lighting. I said, okay, well, let's do a bridal party shot. First thing I did, I said, let's go outrageous. Let's throw the bride on the very top. I said, can, I said Aaron, can you just go stand on that chair? Let's go from there and build it up from there. And I did about three, four variations of this pose. I just thought it was absolutely awesome. All right, you're asking about modifiers. Um, just checking here. I just got to notice. Uh, everybody can hear me, eh, Sean? You can hear me okay? Yeah, coming through fine here. There's been a few people that are... Uh, um, the sound's cutting out on them, or they can't see the picture, or it's an old picture from earlier in the, uh, in the uh, webinar. Oh. But that's probably all connection speeds, right? I would imagine that's what it is. So, Okay, so here's a shoot-through umbrella that I, uh, I have with me, or called a halo light. Uh, SB800, if I need this, um, I have it with me, and I used it in my last wedding for the portraits. If I need nice portrait lighting, I will fire this sucker up, uh, and, and you see the uh, right here where the the flash is mounted, I have one of those triple mounts where I could actually put three of them, so if I wanted to pile in a three SB800s at full power, I can do it, so I just turn one onto a pocket wizard and the other two on optical slave, and I just fire away if I need that extra boost, so I will use this lighting occasionally, it's with me, uh, in case I need it for nice soft portrait lighting. And and here's an example from last fall where I used it. That's the uh, shoot through. And over back here is just a straight SB800 as a kicker light. And way back there I threw in another SB800 uh, on optical slave and it's firing uh, some light into the background. This was a really dark, dark, dark church. You can see how dark it is over here. So, And we did all the parents. This is the bride's parents, bride's brother and bride's brother's wife and the bride and groom did the parents and family shots bada boom bada bing 20 minutes I don't normally do them in the church I know a lot of places do but uh, we just don't in these parts and I prefer not to but the reason we uh, did these in the church was because it was like really cold outside it was snowing this is the day before Halloween uh, last October and see there you know the parents as well so I did all that stuff here just to show you kind of how the portrait lighting works as well so and the bride and groom so the halo light works well and you can tell I'm picking up a fair amount of ambient light as well by uh, uh, making sure that the exposure is adjusted you know I these shots I'll shoot 2.8 to f4 uh, 800 ISO easy for portraiture and uh, get that shutter speed down to about a 60th or something like that to drag in, to pull in a little more ambient light. You know, you adjust it according to the scene, right? You, you, whatever it takes. Sometimes I'll use whatever's there, such as a wall sconce. And in this particular instance, that's how I created a whole series of this bride here. So, uh, and, and, you know, you saw the same kind of light earlier when I showed you the bride with the... Uh, the table light that uh, I did a series with the two reflectors. In this case here, this is just real quick and dirty. The no reflectors just up against the wall. Flip the camera to tungsten lighting. I mean, heck, you could go to automatic and it would probably do a half decent job as well. So I just flip it to tungsten. It's nice warm light, and away we go. 
I just want to talk really quick about exposure really quick here for a minute. Uh, when you're looking at light, and you see this, I like I love bringing the light in from behind because it's very dramatic, and that's why I like the sun in the picture. And you see the light on her is really nice, but it's underexposed. So you got to know when it's when you got to use that computer between your ears and make an evaluative assessment. Say, okay, the camera's going to be fooled here. It's going to be underexposed. So I need to open it up a bit, and I'll just go to my uh, exposure compensation, I'll just dial in one or two f-stops, like plus one or plus two right on the compensation. I'm using that all the time. I'll look at a scene, I'll go, that's going to need one, one and a half, boom, take a test, look at, chimp the back of the camera, looks pretty good, see my uh, histogram, looks pretty good, we're going to run with it. So I want, in this case, to overexpose that background. And uh, this is how I actually ended up workflowing it later, almost a pure high white key shot, uh, nice and soft, so. Same thing with the groom, you're shooting a dark fabric. Uh, the camera wants to compensate and brighten it up. So in this case, the tie and the shirt collar was overexposed. So you've got to know what to do and compensate for it, and you've got to darken that image. So there are situations where you have to know, you know, make an assessment, make an evaluation. What do I need to do to make this exposure work? So it's good, it's important understand light it's important to understand exposure okay so let's uh, let's talk about all the different shots that I would do at uh, at a typical wedding day and then I'm going to go through an actual series of images from my last wedding you know and I want to remind you that uh, uh, a lot of it's not etched in stone other than you know uh, you know, getting a good exposure and, and, and really putting on a good show and, and getting a lot of the uh, scene setter shots and the trigger shots, I call them trigger shots, or they trigger emotion. So that's why I call them trigger shots. When the bride sees them later on, you got to remember a lot of these shots, they have a story. You don't know about it, but to them, it's there's a story. There's a whole series of events that will go with that particular uh, image, and it will trigger an emotional reaction. It just works. You, you know, you ever hear a song from like whenever and it takes you back or sometimes there's a scent, a certain scent, homemade cookies, and it just takes you back to your childhood? Well, a lot of images will do that as well. So it's really important at the Bright's Home to look for those shots. Well, I mean, the whole wedding day you want to look for scene setters and trigger shots. But I also really want to get a shot of the bride getting dressed and having the, the bridesmaids fuss about her. And I uh, organize this before the wedding day. I talk about it. I tell her I want to get it done. So don't pop into your dress until I'm there. Be ready to get into your dress so that when I do show up, you can just duck into the uh, bedroom. And as soon as you're covered and decent, call me in and I'll come in and make sure the bridesmaids are ready. So I kind of set that one up, but it's all shot kind of candid as well. Um, I want to set up the bride when she sees um, her dad for the first time or when dad sees her for the first time it's a very emotional shot and uh, you want to set it up I also uh, get the girls alone at the bride's home if I can uh, if I can't if I run out of time I won't do girls alone or the girls with the bride I won't even do the bride because uh, I can do those later but I, I you know I try to get them at the bride's home also shots with her parents, I feel those are pretty important as well. And lots and lots and lots, lots of candid shots. Okay, so I show up at the bride's home, I look at the yard right away. And I got my 70 to 200 on my D700 ready to go, uh, typically set at ISO 200 because I know I'm going to be outside. There's going to be a good chance to get some scene setter shots. So these are flowers that were planted in their yard, and there's a story there. I mean, the mom planted those probably, or the dad did. Somebody planted something, and this has some meaning to her. That's part of her home. So, And it's also part of the season, so it represents whatever that season was. So I look for stuff in the yard, and I start shooting right away. I also shoot the actual address of the house. And this was my wedding from last October. It was snowing. It was miserably cold. And it was Halloween. It was the day before Halloween. So I show up and I'm shooting this stuff that's going to show the day. This is the day of your wedding. It was uh, Halloween and it was cold 
and uh, snowy. Also get a wide shot of the house, especially if the bride kind of grew up there because it's a very important shot. So, you know, when I show up at this particular house, I can see in the backyard there's a, a white uh, tent. Obviously, they're going to have a party the next day. Uh, and I shoot the actual uh, number of the house. And you can see, see in the background over there? Right there, there's uh, a wreath. Okay, I'm going to, awesome lighting back there, open shade. I'm going to use that later and I'll show you. And I went to the back, get a nice tall vertical shot of the tent in the backyard. Sometimes they're getting ready at the at the hotel, and uh, that's where everything's happening. And they put a sign out, so take a picture of it. Or in this particular case, it was at a lodge out in the bush. Uh, and they often have signs for the guests to find their way around. You know, it's way, way out in the bush. Uh, and there's that lodge right there, as a matter of fact. So I get a picture of the actual lodge, the actual surroundings. Uh, and in this particular case, I believe I would have used a polarizer on the 24 to 70. I didn't have the 14 to 24 back then. I only acquired that two months ago. And at this particular place, I got there early enough, so I'm walking around the property just scoping things out and getting shots. Uh, these are all scene setter shots. These are, you know, this is the area, so, and I'm dragging the shutter a little bit here, handheld, not even using a tripod, I'm just probably squatting down and I'm anchoring my elbows into my knees, and I'm a human tripod, call me human tripod man, and uh, if you slow the shutter down to about a 15th or a 30th, you can get the nice streamy effect. Uh, I noticed in this wedding here from last year that the, uh, the, the father owns like a, a Toyota dealership and a Nissan dealership, so... Yeah, they had all these customized plates made, so I got a picture of that. I mean, you got to pay attention. you got to look for these things, and I photographed the house as well again. Um, you got to look all the time. So as soon as I get into the house, I'm shooting right away, and I know when I'm in here, uh, this particular shot right here of Dad who's doing the dishes, right? Dad's doing the dishes in his tuxedo. And I got the camera, I turned the ISO up to about 1,000, and uh, autumn, I put it on aperture priority, and that lens is opened up to 2.8. Okay, I'm 2.8 always uh, when it comes to these shots. So I'm just ready to shoot, and I'm just popping away pictures, and I got a whole series of pictures. You know, there's one of, I don't know, somebody. It just was funny, so I did the shot. Okay, and here's another one from the lodge wedding I did last year. You know, these are all guests that are coming, that flew, that drove in or flew in from many, many miles to come to this wedding in this lodge, which was hours away into the bush. So I'm thinking, this is cool. This is all part of the environment. This is all part of the story. I'm taking pictures of all the guests. The more, I believe, the more you can get pictures of people, I think, that really adds a lot of value to the wedding. So first thing beyond that, what I look for, if I'm not shooting right away, is to try and get a picture of the dress. I know it's somewhere hanging, so I'll go and scope it out and get a picture of the dress. You know, you've seen these shots a million, million times, yeah, but it's important to get it. And I'll put it over on the window if I have to, and uh, get a nice backlit shot of the dress there. So, And then I'll start taking detailed shots, the wedding rings, the... Uh, flowers, the uh, bride's sunglasses were there in this particular case, so I, I hung the uh, jewelry off the bride's sunglasses with the flowers in the background. Okay, always get a picture of the invitation with the flowers. Uh, this is where I use this, the 60 mil macro lens. Pretty much the only time I use it is for these close-up shots, typically at the bride's home. By the way, 100% natural light, I just find a window, and I bring the coffee table over, or I'll use a hutch or whatever. I'll get on the floor. I don't care. I just get the shot, and I'll open up a reflector to kick in a little extra light, and that's how I shoot it. You know, 800 ISO, 1,000 ISO. If there's, uh, if it's kind of a low light situation because it's uh, maybe it's diffused or it's facing north and it's diffused, don't be afraid to get the ISO up there. So get a nice detailed shot of the invitation and the rings and uh, the, the flowers and everything else. So, excuse my nose, I'm a little bit stuffed up from a brutal cold. Question? Yeah, quick question. Um, this was earlier actually, but do you typically 
shoot all manual, or do you throw in some aperture priority? I'm largely aperture priority. 2.8, like this one here was 2.8 aperture priority. Okay, the shot uh, I showed you earlier of the bride with the, with the backlighting, that was aperture priority. But I looked at it, I went, I gotta, I gotta add some more lights, so I would have dialed in plus one. I used the compensation quite a bit. Yep. You can I do go, the same. You can go manual. I mean, I know Judy Cormier shoots 100% manual. And she just looks at a scene. She goes, uh, "That's one one twenty fifth. That two five point six does a test. Oh man, I was off by two thirds. Let's adjust, adjust." I'm not. I'm. I'm lazy. I. You know. I want the camera to do a lot of the work, but you got to know when to let your brain do the work too. So, so I'm. I'm aperture priority quite a bit. The. I. I should be clear though. You know. You know the off-camera stuff I was showing you earlier. That stuff's all manual. Because. Because yep. I'm using like studio lights outside. When you know the the grooms. The grooms, the groomsmen with the uh, remember that RCMP dude, those were all manual. You know, I went to two fiftieth of a second, f sixteen, and uh, I think at that one I actually used the polarizer as well. Yeah, when you're using that off-camera flash, you have to be mindful of your uh, sync speed. Yeah, yeah you you can only manual. go as there's only I think most cameras are two fiftieth of a second. Uh, you know, it'd be really cool if they could. I know with the TTL you can increase that, but it it, it yep. drains the output of the flash power as well. So you you kind of give up one thing to have more of another. So right. <coughs> I've also had a couple of questions too, Rob, about uh, um, depth of field, like shooting groups, and uh -huh. um, people are really nervous about shooting as wide open as you do. Practice, 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 man. You got to practice. I I can't stress that enough. Uh, if you're struggling with it. Uh, get your camera. If you're using a longer lens, get your camera up on a tripod. Um, I'm really confident with it, so it's not an issue. Put it on a tripod. It's just going to slow you down and regulate things and practice. And maybe go to f4. You know, you you could play with your shutter speed a little bit if you do that. But you really got to practice, and you got to know what your camera is going to give you, so that when you go into a scene, you're not guessing. Okay, you gotta practice it. I really can't emphasize that enough. So I'm just showing more detailed shots. Any more questions there, Sean? Um, somebody, uh, Josh just asked, how did you avoid getting the box dirty in that sand picture? Oh, there was there was a bit of dirt on it. It's uh, it's just a ring box. Whatever. They're at a yeah, lodge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One time I had a coffee and I spilt the whole coffee on the bride's dress. That was not good. No, don't, <laughs> don't, don't ever bring coffee near a bride's dress. I'm joking. I didn't do that. Uh, so I set this shot okay. up. I set. You see, this shot here is the. Uh, there's a piano in the bride's home, and I got the flowers were all in vases. So I set it up on the piano because I knew the piano had some family history to it. Remember earlier I talked about that wreath that was at the bride's home. Well, I brought the bride's flowers outside, put them in a the wreath, took a picture. And all sweet lighting going on here, nice, soft, soft, soft lighting. So I do a lot of shots of the shoes. That's usually the next thing I do is I, uh, I uh, scope out the shoes, or I'll send Travis or whoever my assistant is, go find the bride's shoes. Uh, apparently, shoes are a big deal. This is what I came to understand uh, after getting married, and my, my wife had a double closet, walk-in closet, wall-to-wall -wall shoes. I'm like, ah, what? So uh, shoes are a girl's happy place, apparently. And uh, so I always make sure to get lots of shots of shoes in creative spots and in creative angles. Okay, I'll go around the bride's house and just set up different areas, maybe do two or three shots of the uh, bride's shoes. You know, And in this case, uh, just on the top of her bed for a little bit of fabric. Those are cool shoes there. They're, I think they're Adidas shoes. I'm just waiting for the screen to show up for you guys. There they are. Okay, I told you I bring markers to the uh, wedding. What I do is I get the bridesmaids to write their names on the bottom of the shoes if the shoes are white-heeled. Uh, and I get a shot of the bride holding the shoes. Okay, usually I do this at the bride's home, but in this case I forgot to do it at her house, so I had a, I did it later after the ceremony. That's what I, you know, the bridesmaids are standing around. I said, can you guys sign the shoes? For, and I'm going to get a picture. Okay, get the shoes on her feet as well. And there's another shot of the uh, uh, bride holding the shoes, white sole shoes. A lot of them are white, so 
Yeah, it's just a cool shot. When they see you doing this, they just like think it's the coolest thing. And I tell them, don't write your name in full. Don't write your name like if it's Elizabeth and everybody calls you Liz, write Liz. If, you, if you're if you used to doing little XO, happy faces or hearts, well, however you normally sign your name, do that because they tend to formalize it. So I have to explain to them to write their name in the most casual way, you know. And I also, if the bride's not there yet, I also wait for that opportunity to get her as she's arriving. Uh, sometimes they're just late from the hair and that, and it's like, darn, okay. So I'll get shots of her coming in. Okay. So those are shots I get at the bride's home. So the bride getting ready, I like doing the peekaboo from behind the door shots. If I can see that that's happening, uh, I'm just waiting for that image to show up. There we go. See these shots here? I get back in the hallway, shoot the frame of the doorway, back into the scene if I can. If that's happening, that's what I like to do. And I'm looking for emotion. So in this case, you know, 70 to 200 is my other lens that's on my camera. I can pick it up and boom, 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 2.8, aperture priority, crank out a shot of mom. She's crying. You know, and uh, little girls. Lots of candidates, lots and lots of candidates at the bride's home. For you know, as best I can, I'll do some shots of the bride. In this case, it was one window, patio window, and that's all I had. I mean, but that's it. That's all I needed, man. I got a whole series of shots of the bride here. You know, and if I don't get them, I'll get them later uh, at the uh, formals. I can always get some more if I feel I didn't get enough of the bride. I'll get some more later. So. All handheld. I shoot color, so I convert to black and white later, and I'll show you how I do that later. This shot here, I just noticed it was the uh, bride's fa father getting pinned. I just noticed that light was coming in from that patio. So that was kind of cool the way it kind of rim lighted him. So, boop, picked my camera up, shot it, and away we go. And just more candid shots of her getting her makeup sort of dabbed down. If there's pets, I always get shots of the pets. I uh, get way down low. Uh, cats or dogs. I'll try and use the house as best I can. And in this particular case, it's a vaulted ceiling with the skylights coming through. So I had them go on top and popped off a few shots shooting from below. Sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do, so I'll just fake it and say, all right, let's just go here and try this. you got to kind of do that. Never let them see you sweat and uh, make it look like you know what you're doing. If it's not, if you don't really know, you just keep mo momentum is more important than anything. I get them out in the street and get them walking uh, because the bride's probably got a lot of memories on that street. And if I can, if there's time, if there's a window, I will backlight them uh, like this. And again, you got to add in about, you got to remember when you're shooting this, remember I showed you earlier, it's going to overexpose by a couple stops, so you got to know to compensate for it. Okay, it's just a great shot. Now, just a regular three bedroom bungalow, you can get some nice, spectacular looking images here. So this girl here is a large girl, and she told me, she says, you know, I don't want any back fat, and I, you know, I'm big, and, you know, they're usually very funny and outgoing and just right in my face about it, and I said, that's fine. You know, to me, you're beautiful. This is your day. I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to be aware of what it is that you want, and so uh, managed to get a lot of great shots for her. So in this case, you know, this is just a picture window. That's all that's lighting her. This picture right here, you know, it's just the light coming in from uh, the picture window. and She's just standing there. It's beautiful Rembrandt-style lighting, you know, and I'm cranking the ISO up to whatever I need it to be. It could very, very, I don't know what it is, but it could be 2,000. I would easily go to 2,000 for shots like this. Okay, and this is just a grab shot. This is that vaulted ceiling shot. She happened to be walking towards it, so I grabbed a quick, quick shot. So you got to be on the lookout all the time. And again, another shot with the uh, windows. And another shot with uh, windows and some lamps in the foreground, creatively doing some fun stuff with, uh, with the house. In this particular case, this was a really nice house with a beautiful entranceway foyer. So I got the wide angle out and shot a whole series of shots. And brought her outside and did a whole series of shots with her with off-camera flash. 
I do not normally do this, but for this bride here, I showed up an extra hour early because she had such an awesome house, and I wanted to do that. She was all for it, so I got a whole series of extra shots for her. Okay, uh, there's another bride. She's a larger girl, and uh, in the, brought them in the backyard. Just doing some off-camera flash here and some funky uh, coloring technique, and got the sun flaring out in the picture. It works. And there's uh, the bride and the bride's maids on the street. Cold, miserably cold and rainy. I get them out there, man. That's whatever. And if there's any resistance, I won't push my luck. But uh, you know, I you know, I push them. I'll push them. This is a lobby at a hotel, just with light coming in. You, I don't know if you notice the consistency of working with the window light, picture light. It's just coming in, and they're sort of facing it for that nice Rembrandt style lighting. And there's the girl I was talking about earlier. She was a, a bigger girl, and I got some nice, beautiful rim lighting shots to kind of tone her down just a bit. And again, you can see it here. One light is all we all we need. One light in the uh, bedroom here to get some nice lighting going. <coughs> Same thing with this girl here. I got some nice um, rim light going. She's a larger girl, and her too. And I just choose the best angles to try and really bring out the, 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 the most flattering uh, poses possible. So shooting down kind of works, but in this particular shot, um, I just notice how I, I hid her whole body. Use the flowers, use the veil, threw the dad in the background. We've got beautiful light coming off the bride here. So it's, again, one picture window is all it is. One picture window shooting at 2.8. Okay, let's talk about the ceremony. And I'm going to show you more stuff at the bride's home later as I go through my wedding. Okay, I always meet the guys 45 minutes. I always chat with the officiant. Even if I was there the week before, I go introduce myself again. I do mostly candids. Well, there's nothing really, really not that many pose shots. Uh, the recessional uh, and processional, I put the 900 on my camera. And if there's enough bounce light, I'll aim it up or halfway up to the ceiling. Um, and in most churches there is enough, and I'll set it typically ISO 800 or 1200 or 1500 easy on manual. I put it on manual because I look at the ambient light of the church and I say, okay, I'm going to get away with F4 pretty easy at uh, a one hundredth of a second. I'll do a test, and if that works, it works. And if it doesn't, I modify the shutter speed. Excuse me while I sneeze. <coughs> And, uh, sorry, John, question? Oh, Theraflu. Pardon? Theraflu. Theraflu? Yeah, you need some drugs, man. Ah, uh, it's because I'm talking, you know. I've had this cold since last Friday, and uh, as I talk, my throat is getting itchy. I uh, Uncle, Char Uncle Charlie had a quick question. Um, he wanted to know if uh, you're using auto white balance inside the house. He wants to know if I'm using auto white balance. <laughs> no, I'm using that whatever I had at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, was it Expo Disc or something? No. I, remember I said I got lazy and I started using the uh, custom white balance that I have set for my studio lights? Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, it works. Sometimes it looks a little warm, but hey, whatever. You know, it really reminds me of the old film days when you had daylight film, and that was it. You had daylight film, so it's, it sounds like I'm telling people not to do a custom white balance when I've always been harping about custom white balance. So I typically do not. And uh, if I had to use auto white balance, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't see a problem with it. In most situations, if I was doing portraits, key portraits, I would probably not because I want to make sure I get good results. Is that cool, I think? Cool. All right. When I'm at the ceremony, I'm also shooting a lot of kids. I look for kids. And I'm shooting the crowd, you know. But if the ceremony is about to begin and it's a full house, I'll get right up the middle of the church, walk up if I feel I can do this up on the uh, altar, get my wide angle on. I'll turn around and shoot a wide shot. Like this is it. We got a full packed house. That's a cool picture. And then I'll slap on the 70 to 200. I'll grab the other camera, and the, the grandparents are sitting there and uh, they're looking at me right, and they're like, oh, "He's not going to take our picture, is he?" And I'm like. I'm going to take your picture, and I'll start shooting pictures of them, close-ups. I'll look at them, and I go, oh, you guys are VIP section, aren't you? And I'll joke with them, and I'll talk with them, and I'll get all kinds of shots of them and uh, just get them going. And I'll, That's just the way I am. 
and I'm not discreet in that case, but when the ceremony starts, be discreet. You have to walk softly. Don't make an ass out of yourself. Hold on again. <coughs> and uh, be respectful of where you are, you know. So you got to know the house rules. If the, if the officiant says no flash, I'll ask, well, can I do some non-flash shots very quiet from the very back of the church? You won't even know I'm there. And they go like, well, yeah, I guess that's okay. And then I get the shots and, you know, excuse me one sec. <laughs> All right, let's get into the church. So get the guys at the church 45 minutes before, and I get them walking as well as those off-camera flash shots I talked about earlier. You know, we call those the reservoir dog shots. And I'll just tell them, you know, I'll say, guys, I want you guys to go all the way down the street. When I holler to stop, I want you to stop, and I, I'll get a shot of them walking away, and I'll get a shot of them stopping and just looking at the camera, then I'll get a shot of them walking. I'll say, walk towards me with the 70 to 200. And as they're walking towards me, uh, at some point in time when they're really close, I'll throw in a wide angle, and I'll take this shot inside the church where the ceremony is, outside the church where the ceremony is. <coughs> and, oh, I've already got this shot. Well, different shot, same guys. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it. Bingo. It takes, uh, takes a while for the, the image to show up because I can preview here at this end and the response time is slow. Uh, again, just uh, outside the hotel where they got married. Outside the church where they're going to get married. And you'll notice that I'm, uh, you know, strong compositional lines. Uh, very vertical and uh, interesting. Just, just grand looking shots. So you gotta got to be able to use your lenses properly in order to get as, as much of that effect and as much of that impact as you can. There's the uh, lodge wedding. Uh, that's the groom. The best man was a girl, and the groomsman was a guy. So, yeah, it works. Get the sun right in the picture, off-camera flash, full power, two Nikon SB800s. I'll also get a shot individual of each guy. Even if they got glasses on, I'll bring them in close. As I got them set up, I'll say, okay, now I want to get a shot of each one of you individually. Let's start with you, and I'll point to a guy, bring them in close, and uh, do it either wide or with the 70 to 200. I'll do both, actually. Let me just show you in a minute. And there's uh, another shot of the guys in front of the church, and there's the, you know, each individually. I'm just waiting for the images to catch up with themselves here. <clears throat> And the guy's walking. So 70 to 200, as they're walking towards me, some creative angles, and I'm shooting. Click, 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 and I'm just getting them to talk to each other. Don't look at the camera. Talk to each other. Um, okay, there was a shot I wanted to show you of each gro groomsman individually. It's going to come up later in my wedding. You have a question, Sean? Yeah, Rob, do you ever, uh, you ever do the jumping shot? Yeah, it's coming up. So in the church, there's not a lot of posing that goes on other than the shots I just showed you. <coughs> it's pretty much candid. So, I, I, you know, the groom's looking outside. Now, I'll be honest with you, I set this one up. I just asked him, I said, can you just go by the window and look outside? Don't smile, you know. It looks candid. I set this one up, okay. you got to know sometimes when to do that. And, you know, he's looking outside. He's waiting for the wedding day to start and whatnot. And then I get a shot of the uh, location, scene setter. And uh, I do this double exposure one quite a bit. They still love this. This is really corny from the 70s. They love it. They absolutely love it. I use the 70 to 200 quite a bit when I'm shooting the ceremony. And in this case, the uh, the bride's just starting to walk down. I always, always try and get a shot of the groom as he sees the bride for the first time walking down the aisle. Typically, I'm a little closer, but in this case, I, I was outside. I had so I had acres of room. You'll notice the composition. I'm just it's they're backlit by the sun. It's cool lighting. 
and uh, I'm showing lots of forest in the background in this particular shot. I did a lot of this kind of composition for that to pick for that wedding, and there's the same wedding, same idea. I did do some close-ups, but I also did a lot of long shots like this as well. Always look for kids on a wedding day. You know, you can see a kid. I see a kid standing out in the middle like this, and if they're not looking at me, you know, I'll make a noise or I'll, I'll drop a little set of keys in front of me and just to get their attention because <laughs> I love getting this stuff. And I look for kids at the ceremony, and I get shots of them all, and they ham it up for me. So I'm always getting in and focusing on the children. The reason why I do that is because I think they really add a really cool element to the pictures in the end, and it just warms their hearts because they all go, oh, it's, oh, you know that, that response, and, and that's critical. You, you want that. Even young teenagers like this guy is like 12 years old. Okay, I get a shot of the church location, or in this case it's a hotel, uh, from behind, super wide. And uh, when they leave, get them doing hurrah. The reason I'm not showing you other shots is we're going to go through that wedding soon, and you'll see more in detail. Sometimes they want to get the whole group shot. We talk about it beforehand, and I explain to them, I want to get you guys up front. You have to just stay there with your bridal party and get them to help me. And I'll often sometimes send the brides, the groomsmen out and say, can you guys go just hurry everybody down? And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty vocal. You know, come on, guys, come on in. Come on in. You can move in closer. There's more room over there. You guys can come over here. And it's never really 100% perfect, but it's a cool picture. They, sometimes they want it, so I, I get it. I'm not shy with people, so. And there's, uh, again, hurrah, leaving the ceremony. And in this case, I had uh, the uh, people walking down. The uh, This is the best man and maid of honor here. But the best man happened to be a girl, so it's the best girl. And uh, uh, sometimes they do a receiving line, and I'll get lots and lots of candidates of that as well. Okay, that'll come up some more later. Let's talk real quick about formals. Okay, the formals, typically what I do is I have a discussion, again, two, three, four weeks before the wedding date. Sometimes we talk about it when they're booking their wedding date. We just kind of go over a rough itinerary. So I say, we're going to get the parents done first and the family so they can be they can leave. They, they don't have to follow us. We decide on where that's going to be. Now, I've noticed over the years, a lot of my couples are like, you know, whatever, Rob. You know, just whatever you want. I says, okay, if it's raining, just I'll come up with a plan. If it's not raining, we'll go. I kind of know where you kind of like, so I'll I'll tell you where we're going on the day of. It, it, you know, they'll just leave it all up to me. I don't look in f for them to decide these things. They often end up looking to me, and it takes a lot of weight off their shoulders. I just noticed that that's happened a lot more. They really just trust me implicitly, so maybe I scare them. I don't know. But, you know, it's just, it works out really, really well. I, I think a really big mistake is to go to them and say, well, where do you guys want to go? You know, you know, say, okay, they'll, they'll say, well, okay, we want to get pictures now uh, of this. And you just have some ideas, have some input, be consultive. So, I mean, I do ask questions, you know. So, what do you guys think about going to this location? Would that, and I can judge by their reaction if the bride's like, eh. And, uh, I don't like back alleys and graffiti, so and then I know not to go there. So, so I'll do the family and parents right away. Sometimes in, in the church, outside the church, or nearby at a park, or we'll drive to a park and I'll still get them done first, and then we'll segue into the uh, bridal party shots because I really want to lighten the load, travel light. And so we have several locations. If there's time, we'll bounce around and we'll just have fun. We'll be driving around. We'll maybe go to a coffee shop, maybe go to a pub, maybe go to a, in one case, and I'll show you an image later, I went to the university where they used where they met. We did some pictures there. So I have a plan, but more importantly, know when you have to bring them back to the hall. That's key to me. So I say to them weeks before, I say, what time is your supper? Are you doing a grand entrance? I'm going to get you at that hall no later than 6 o'clock, okay? And that's my goal. So I know in my mind i got to get them there at 6. Oftentimes, in spite of that, we're shooting, we're having so much fun, the bride will say, I'll say to you, I'll say, look, it's 10-2, guys, we've got to go back to the hall now. 
get you there in time, and she'll say, you know what, Rob, screw it, they can wait. And, and all right, we're going to shoot some more. So you kind of get a sense of how easygoing the groom is by asking them to do this shot here. Okay, so, <laughs> or you get all the groomsmen doing this, and I look at the groom and I say, okay, I want you to do a shot here. We're going to put your uh, wife behind you over here against the wall. And, uh, and then I'll step back, I'll take my camera off, and I'll, I'll jump up in the air and do it. I'll say, this is what I want you to do. And, and then I'll look at them and, <laughs> you know, most of them are cool. They're cool. And it gives me an idea. And sometimes they're like, uh, uh, I don't know. And then I know, and maybe don't push this guy so hard. So uh, there's a, you know, it looks like a candid shot. You have a question. I do. Um, what's the shutter speed on the jumping shots? Uh, well, it's outside, no off-camera flash whatsoever, so I'm cranking it up to about 5, 6, 100, 800. I really want to freeze it. So, a uh, 2.8. Yep. Here's a grab shot. Okay, we're just doing the limo, and I grave one of the uh, SB800s to somebody back there. I don't know where it is. Down around here somewhere. Oh, he's holding it right there. Look. There, and I think somebody else has one. So this guy's holding an SB800, and there's one on my camera on one hand held. I don't know. There's some light coming in from the side of the limo, and there's light back there. I just had the wide angle lens, and I popped this. It's a grab shot. I think it's cool. So you got to look for opportunities like that. When they occur, you just got to know to get the shot and be ready for it. <coughs> Sometimes we go to outdoor locations like this and get a whole series of shots. Because we talked about it, we planned it, and I knew that's what the bride wanted. And as we're walking around downtown, I look for opportunities all the time. And in this case, two flower girls, two little princesses, and we've got the little ring boy. And I very nonchalantly went up to him and I said, hey, buddy, can you grab your hands? I want you guys, we're going to have a we're gonna have a little race later on, but I need you guys to hold hands. Now, you see, you know, it's not about holding hands because it's really cute because he might go, ew, that's gross. No, no, we're going somewhere where this is a competition now. So, so you've got to kind of know how to work with kids. So they're like, they're, he's right into it, man. You know, he's holding our hands, and we're going, we're walking, and you notice people are all over downtown. We do this quite a bit, by the way. Uh, I just love doing this, walking around uh, from location to location with uh, my bridal party. And in this particular wedding, we're walking to the, the brick walls. And if I remember correctly, this was one of the weddings where the groom wasn't into that jumping shot. He's a doctor, you know. Doctors don't do that. All right, I'm waiting for the next image to show up. This was cold. This was last year, uh, around New Year's. Freezing cold. But they really, really, really wanted pictures outside, and we did a lot of pictures outside. And there is off-camera flash going on here, and you got to be quick. Uh, the D the D800 uh, flashes will suffer from hypothermia, just like a human being will. Okay, and just a very traditional shot of the bride and groom. Again, 70 to 200, 2.8. Tilt the lens. I do a whole series of the bride and groom. Same pose, looking at the camera, segues into a whole series of poses, looking down, looking at each other, turn her around, looking at each other, kissing, kissing her, shoulder, her forehead, looking at me. You know, it's just it's typical stuff, bread and butter stuff. <coughs> And in this case here, I hope that coughing's not too loud. Is it loud, Sean? So I'm taking the microphone away from my mouth when I'm doing that. No, it's just really gross. Oh, okay, sorry. No. <laughs> Off-camera flash here. We've got some uh, badass rocks going on, so I wanted to get that real edgy kind of rock star look. You know, it's very masculine. Har har. And uh, this was done after the ceremony. I just love this. And we got to do another shot of the guys right here. Get your glasses on, guys. We're going to get another shot of you guys in front of these rocks. Uh, she had umbrellas and rubber boots in case of rain. It never rained. I said, let's use the umbrellas anyway. So we got a whole series of shots with the umbrellas. She absolutely loved them. Again, 70 to 200. I love that lens, you know, 70 to 200. I'm just firing away. Look at the composition. Lots and lots of sky up on the higher part. Of the of the image, and you have them sitting there with their rubber boots on, and then close-ups of the rubber boots. I'm just waiting for the images. They take a while to roll forward here. 
boom, that one just showed up right there, right, Sean? I'm trying to time it here. Another one should up, show up in a second. Uh, I clicked. It's going to show up. Wait for me. Wait for me. Right, yeah. right. Wait, wait. I see it. Hold on. Watch. Now. No. Did it? It didn't change. Oh. Okay, well, I'm going to click it. I'm going to click. What, okay, you see a bunch of the bride with the boots, right? Yep. Okay, I'm going to click right now. For me, it switched right away. Did it switch right away? Tell yeah, me when. It switched. Uh, yep. Oh, okay. On my, switched. on my preview screen, it's showing the previous image. So I'm thinking you guys see the, the older image. Okay, well, that's good. So you see a picture of the boots with the flowers in the boots. Yep. The bride loved, loved this picture. She was ecstatic over it. So I, if I'm shooting in town or in another town, I, I do uh, uh, you know small towns in and around the north where I'm from and whatnot. I'll get them right in town, and we'll do a whole series of shots right downtown because there's a history there. That's their town. That's their hometown. I'll just wide-angle lens, throw them in the middle of the street, and uh, get a bunch more of the bride with the uh, you know back alley stuff. Do some fun squatting down poses. Do some like you know a lot of this is not planned. I just really don't know what I'm going to do. I just say, go. can you go up against the wall, get your hand up on your waist, and uh, bring your flowers up a little higher? It looks good. I shoot it. And then I'll get the little girl in there. I'll say, okay, I want you to stand in front of uh, this in front of Kristen for me, and I'll get a shot of the two of you. And I'm just kind of rolling with the flow, uh, posing. And the lighting is open shade in this area. There's no, uh, no off-camera flash, 2.8. It's all good. Oh, that one, we've already seen that one, didn't we? Okay. I get the girls up on the, against the wall. I get them to start laughing. Ha 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 ha! And I'll and I'll start laughing myself just to get them laughing and to get them going. And it's they always always respond. They always start laughing. Ha ha! It's crazy. They think it's so funny. So here's a shot with off camera flash, polarizer out in the sun. The sun is in the picture, and we got a wide angle lens. Some kind of got some high fashion posing going on. That's that's kind of what I call it anyway. So. Looks cool, girls with the sunglasses, bride and groom with the sunglasses with a local landmark, off-camera flash. And then I always do a series of the bride and groom walking. 2.8, crank that lens out, use walls, just whatever, sit down, stand up, okay, switch, you take turns now, like, you know, whatever works. And there's that winter shot again, and we have the uh, bride and groom out in the cold, 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 cold snow. I had, they actually went and laid in the snow. They were doing snow angels. So, you know, and it was cold. That's what they wanted, man. And uh, we did another shot of them at the hall. So there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I never know. I never know what I'm going to do. If there's umbrellas, I'll do this shot. You know, in this particular case here, the bride and groom said, let's go up to the university because that's where we met. And it's down the road. It's five miles down the road. And uh, we did. We went to the university and got a whole series of shots there. Do you have a question, Sean? Hey Rob. Hey, could you move your uh, your mouse? This. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell me when. Tell me when you want me to stop moving. No, that's good right there. <laughs> you want you want it out of the way? Yeah. Hey, somebody asked about that. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know. Do some kissing shots. This one here's got a off camera flash with the polarizer. You can tell by the deep blue sky, and it's just got that polarized look about it. Again, walking shots, you know, just get them romantically walking. So I'll mix them in there, man. I'll mix them in there, romance and some funky stuff and all kinds of uh, crazy stuff. And, again, there's the uh, typical looking at the camera stuff, you know, the essential five poses, you know, her facing each other, then looking at each other, kissing each other, looking down, bring the flowers in front, looking down, holding her chin ever so lovingly, have her spin around, looking at the camera, looking down, looking away, you know, and then get her in behind the groom, get his arms up in the air and say, okay, now hug your husband and get a series like that, and then walking and uh, whatnot. So there's the uh, university shots. I just, you can tell the flash. It's not well lit, but that's okay. I just get the darn shot and let's get out of there. We're doing a whole series of shots, cameras, uh, I've got the ESB 900 lighting this one up, and we went up to the top area where they used to spend a lot of time in university, and I just hopped up on a table, and I had everybody sit cash. I really didn't know what I was doing here. I just 
put the little girls in the foreground, make it cute, 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 put everybody else sitting, let's just shoot it, and they loved it. And again, I get the bridal party walking quite a bit too, right downtown, I'll just, but I'll, you get the, you got to be careful with this kind of a shot. You know, often it's later in the day and the sun's out, you just got to uh, expose extra light in. So I'll crank the, about a, a stop, stop and a half to two stops extra to get the shadows opened up. I don't care if the background's out of focus. It looks good. Okay, I'll just shoot. Standard stuff, you know, this is all standard, very 1988. But I'll do it, you know, standard stuff. And then I'll do the casual stuff as well. You have a question, Sean, or you just muted it off? Okay, good. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't ever let it happen again. And again, bridal party shot. Uh, you know, in this case, there's there's uh, flashes that are really lighting it up. And again, same bridal party. And I do the thank you cards. That's the, I remember I was talking about the black boards earlier. I bring those, and I ask the bride and groom to hold them up, and I tell them, I say, I'm going to put thank you on there later, and I just put it in there in, in Photoshop. Okay? So I always do this, and it's an awesome addition. They love, love, love the idea of uh, this uh, extra picture. You know, they can use it for emails. They can use it to uh, uh, send out to people later on. And then I get the, the formals. I talked about this, you know, the open shade, the parents and family. I get them done really quick, 2.8, 7,200, uh, in and out, and that's it. So there's more of that, and I just don't want to get into it in great detail because it's pretty standard stuff, and I'm going to show you that wedding soon. So let's talk about the reception for a bit, then I'll get into that wedding, then some Photoshop stuff. You have a question, Sean? Yep, I got a couple of questions. Um, about how much time do you uh, set aside for the, for these formals or the bride and groom photos, bridal party? Well, if, say if a wedding is at 3 and it's a 40-minute ceremony, and I've determined that they're going to be back at the hall for 6 because they want their grand entrance at 6.15. I'll tell them, look, if, you're, if you want to really get maximum pictures, when you leave the church, don't do a receiving line. I don't recommend you do that. Most agree with me. And uh, so, if, you know, you can kiss your parents and your bridal party, but you know, let's have a plan and let's move forward with that plan. Okay? And if it's pictures right outside the church of the parents and that, I... I say, well, it's going to be trickier because there's going to be a lot of people there, but, you know, i got to take the bull by the horns. So if it's a 3 o'clock wedding, 3.40, they're outside the church, 3.45, we're on the road, we're at our first location by 4, uh, or shortly thereafter. So 4.20, parents are done. Parents and family are done. 4.30 at the latest. i still got an hour and a half uh, almost to get the rest of the shots done. I can do a lot in an hour and a half. I can go to two locations. I can move fast and get a lot done. So the most important thing is getting them out of the church in time, getting that plan started, getting them on board with me, getting the parents done. Once that's done, it's it's free reign. Okay, it's total creativity time. It's totally shoot from the hip time. But I know in my head, okay, I got to get the bridal party shots. I got to get the bride and groom shots. And maybe I'm thinking, okay, I didn't get the bridesmaids. I got to get those. I got to get those. Let's get those, and or maybe the bride with each uh, girl individually, uh, or maybe I didn't get any bride of the bride at the home, you know. So I got to get a lot of the bride, or I'll do some extra shots of the bride alone. You know, it depends on the time. Depends how much time I have left. It depends what's essential. So, getting those shots one other, done. One other question: uh, Do you have any? Uh, Brides that are real fussy about their dress. They don't want to get it dirty. Uh, yeah, I understand that question, and uh, I do see that. And oftentimes um, it's dealt with by, you know, I really try hard to connect with the parents, the bridesmaids, and the groomsmen. So they, and they, they know by, after, by this, that becomes an issue typically after the ceremony. Uh, I kind of let her get away with it beforehand. I don't fuss too, too much. Um, and uh, But usually, the bridesmaid will see, man, this guy is really doing some kick-ass stuff. We're getting some good stuff. And if she says, man, we'll get the dress dirty, and she'll say, you know what? Your dress is going to be a mess by the end of the night. Just go with it. And the bride will go, oh, yeah, you're right. So you got to kind of let them see that you're really doing what you're doing. And uh, I, I try and... If, it, if she's really fussy, which is very much the exception, 
I will gently push her towards uh, getting some of the shots I'm trying to get that she might be preventing me from doing. Okay, I never give up, man. I, I don't get cocky about it. Don't become an arrogant son of a gun, but I'll just gently push towards that. But your allies will often work in your favor, which is your bridesmaids. So at the reception, I go to the reception for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours max. You know, I'm in and out, man. I do obscene shots, trigger shots, emotional trigger shots, grand entrance, table shots, toasting cake, and I'm done. Very, very rarely do I not book a wedding, if at all, ever. They sometimes buck a bit and go, well, how long are you staying? I go, well, I'm there for about an hour, an hour and a half, until they get enough shots that I feel I'm happy that you're going to be really satisfied with what we have. And I'll explain it to them. And I'll say, you know, there's not much I can do beyond getting those shots. You know, people talking on the microphone and doing speeches, those are, to me, kind of boring. Uh, sometimes I'll do them, but typically I'm home. I'm, I'm home by 8 o'clock, so. So I show uh, the reception. If, if I'm there early enough, I get the whole hall before people uh, sit down. If not, I'll just get a shot like this. And I'll look for detailed shots. This is that lodge wedding from last, uh, last year. A lot of light pouring in. So I got a lot more detailed shots, detailed shots, tons and tons of detailed shots. Uh, I, I love this one. The first time I had done this was 1996 when I first got a fisheye lens. And I just thought, I thought I was the cat's meow because nobody was really doing this. And I don't know if many people that are doing it. It's just I think it's a cool shot. The bride and groom looking back at me with a super wide angle. And now that I have the 14 mil lens, uh, it's just like spectacular. This is... Uh, I think this was an 18 mil, one of my older lenses. And same one. I'm backed up against the wall here. There is no room for me to move. I'm getting a shot anyway. So, okay. And this is uh, at, a, at the reception hall. This is just before they did their grand entrance. I, it's, I asked them, "Would you guys just just go sit on that chair for a minute and uh, yeah, crank your legs right up on them there, and let's just just don't look at me." And I just shot. Okay. So the grand entrance. Uh, two flashes, one flash on camera. And I use the pocket wizard on camera. I'm on manual, typically 800 to 1500 ISO, 2000 ISO, typically around 5.6, oh, F4, F4. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure it's F4. And uh, I'll turn the uh, shutter speed down to about uh, 100 or so, or 60. So I want to pick up a little bit of ambient, but I'm mostly after the uh, two flashes that are being lit from behind or from the side. Okay, so the pocket wizard is plugged into the SB900. The SB900, this is really important, is minus two stops. Okay, it's really just acting as a fill. Okay, so the SB900 is on camera, and it's just there to boop fill it in a little bit. So this is the same lighting. I just moved my lights over, and I got a picture of them with the 70 to 200. I backed up a bit and got some nice uh, wine shots, uh, dancing shots. You see the, see the flash off to the right? It's flaring out, and there's one off to the left. It's over here. You can tell it's lighting him. There's one coming this way, one coming that way. And I knew they were going to do this dance when this was part of their grand entrance. So I got... Uh, Got a whole series like that. And again, you can see there's just two flashes here off camera. One's off to this side, one's off to that side. And uh, I like this when rival parties in the background. You get a nice uh, backdrop for this uh, um, dance shot. And then I always try and get that SB800 that's lighting the one side. I moved it over. I get them behind, silhouette them almost. Okay? So you got to kind of sometimes move it around a little bit and see what you're doing. But to get the flash behind them is really, really key. And there's that uh, other couple I showed you earlier, 70 to 200, absolutely no flash because there was a lot of light pouring in. I just, I got tired a couple of years ago of doing the old let's toast and look at the camera. I don't know if anybody does that or is that just me stuck in the 80s. Uh, the toasting shot, I just got tired of doing it the old traditional look at the camera. So I started doing these. I said, you guys just snuggle up, try and show the rings, the glasses and uh, just do a series of shots, and, and it seems to be working out really, really well. This wedding here, this was a magical moment. Uh, I was just getting off, the, I was on the chair, and uh, you could see way off to the left, I had, see my daughter, she's right there? She was starting to put, she was starting to put the flash away, and this MC slash DJ is the most incredible guy in the world. 
he gets everybody up dancing. This is like the third or fourth song. And he saw me coming, stepping down, and he got on the mic. He says, Rob, don't leave yet. I looked up, and I saw everybody coming towards me. You know, he didn't tell me, but he organized it. And I looked up, and I went, oh, God, there's an awesome shot. And I, talk, I took four or five shots, and they're all awesome. And uh, I talked to him later. I said, yeah, I said, why don't we, let's do that. Every wedding that I'm at and he's there, we're going to do this now. And, and uh, uh, even if it's before the actual dance, I mean, heck, just get everybody, bride and groom there, and just get everybody up there. Yay! So I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, I want to show you an actual wedding that didn't get into some Photoshop workflow. But let me just tell you some rules to succeed by. You've got to be upbeat and positive. Your attitude sells as much as your work. Be organized. Be professional. Never let them see your sweat. If you're having a tough moment and it looks like you're going to hell in a handbasket, be strong. Be like a director. Don't, be, don't get moody. I see some photographers, they get real, they can just get grouchy or you know, cantankerous, it's not a good idea. Connect with the bridal party. Connect with the parents. Talk to them. Get to know them. C create momentum. Uh, be very much upbeat and make sure they have a lot of faith in you so that they look to you. I mean, it's a heavy, heavy weight to, to bear, and I personally love it. So, you know, after doing it for so many years, I just love it. You know, be somewhat cultured and classy. You know, don't swear. Don't, don't, no pickup lines, all these single guys there, if you see a nice-looking bridesmaid. And if, even if she's flirting with you, nothing stupid. No bad jokes. No tasteless jokes, you know. You know, but be careful what you're saying. And just have some class and be cultured. Uh, uh, air, air, you know, always play it safe. So I want to talk about... Uh, we're kind of running out of time. Holy moly. Let me just show you really, really quick uh, a wedding from, uh, this would be three Saturdays ago or four Saturdays ago. Yeah, I got a bunch of them here, but I'm not going to show them all. Okay? This was uh, February 12th. It was two days before Valentine's Day. Show up to... They were getting dressed at the hotel, okay? So I'm doing candidates, candidates, candidates. Now, you could tell there's a little bit of flash here. I'm bouncing it off the ceiling. So my SB900 is at about minus one stop with that little uh, diffuser on there. Okay, this would have been the other lens, the 70 to 200. These are the 24 to 70, okay? And I'm just popping off candidates. Now I'm doing, let's go do the invitation by the one window. There's one window. Let's do the invitation. Let's do the rings. Let's do some close-ups of the rings. Back to candids. We're doing candids, candids. But oh, there's a mirror. I love using mirrors. Let's shoot low. Shoot low up high. Hey, look, a bottle of Tylenol. Somebody's got a headache. And we're just, okay, let's go back and let's do this again. We'll get a nice wide shot of the rings with the dress in the background. Let's get the dress. Let's go out in the hall uh, because they needed a moment of privacy to get dressed. So let's get uh, the shoes. I'll grab the shoes and bring the shoes with me out in the hall. This is the hotel. Downstairs where they're getting married. I remember the decorators were there. They were just finishing up. Let's go get a shot of the... This, this image popped into my head. I said, we've got to go get this shot. Let's get a shot of the where they're going to get married. Let's get another one. Let's go back. Okay, we're back with the bride and groom. She's all dressed. Oh, sorry, just the bride. Let's get her shoes on. Uh, get the shoes on. Get the shoes on. More candids, 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 can uh, not a candid, but just, you know, I asked her to adjust. I, this was a setup shot. Okay, they're having some champagne, champagne. Mom with uh, her girl, mom with her girl, fun, 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 laughing, kissing, holding, laughing, having champagne. By the way, you're seeing all the images that they got in their wedding. Okay, get up on the, uh, get up on the, uh, I don't know, the table and shoot down, shoot down. Let's get some more candids, more candids, more candids. Okay, let's go downstairs. I noticed there was a spot down there. There was a hallway with lights on both sides. Okay, we're going to do some more candids when we're down there. Detail shots, uh, close-ups of the bride with the 70 to 200. They're, she's, they're fussing over her. They're getting her ready. Notice there's window, windows on either side. Okay, I love this hallway. I'm like, when I walked in, that's the, the, 
the, the causeway thingy that joined the main hotel from the rooms. So I said, we've got to go back there. I had sent somebody to go talk to the bride's father and say, please tell him not to come out until we're ready for him. And that they took care of that. So I get the girls individually. Individually, you can see the reflector in there. You've got to make the girls look really, really good. Very, very important. So I'm just shooting, just having fun, just shooting. 7200, 7200, whole series of shots. Black and white, color, color, color. Okay, I'm asking her to look at me. I'm asking her to spin around, get your hands on your waist. Don't even, This is all natural light. Whatever light's coming through those windows, get a picture of her shoes. Again, a bride with each bridesmaid individually. Get some black and whites. And they're hamming it up. They're hamming it up. I ask them, I say, just look at each other. And they always, always laugh. Except for that girl. <laughs> Uh, so a group shot, another group shot. You can tell this is just reflector. That's all it is, just reflector. Yeah, get them to laugh again. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, we'll go back up to the hall, to the room. We're going back up to the room because she's going to see her dad for the first time. And there's that one window at the end of the hallway. That's all this is. So I get a couple of quick shots. It's this window here. This is the window where I got that light from from the last shot. So the girls are in the room. The dad's outside. I set it up. I tell the girls to get ready in a special spot. She's crying. It's a very emotional moment. The dad was crying too. He comes in, and uh, the dad was very emotional. So I got a whole series of shots. I mean, it's not the best room in the world. It's it's a hotel room. I get some shots of them getting ready. Those are almost like you know, got to do those shots. Okay, just very quick, can uh, sort of formal lead shots. Her and her brother. And I always like getting this shot. Get her in the foreground, mom and dad in the background, out of focus. Okay, let's go back down to the ceremony location. The guys are there now. It's 45 minutes to go. Let's get a shot of them outside with off-camera flash. Let's get them walking. No flash. These are just walking, 7200, walking. One thing I like about snow is it fills in the shadows. All right, let's get them inside. Let's do another group shot. Color, black and white. Let's get them against those chairs. Lots of light pouring in. It's middle of the day. Get a couple shots of the dudes. And individuals of each guy individually. I always do this, 70 to 200, without the glasses on. Uh, nice kind of a, just a memory shot of all the dudes. And then candids. Lots of candids. Candids, candids. Get one of the groom alone. More candids, candids. All right, I'm just going to skip by all these guys. Lots of candidates. I'm always shooting candidates. And as you can tell, they go black and white. Then the girls are in the hall next door waiting to come down the aisle, okay? this is It's getting to be uh, zero hour here. And they're hamming it up for me. They're just doing this. And I've got the on-camera flash, the seventy uh, SB900, bounced off the ceiling. Okay, It's just filling in those shadows because it was pretty dark. There was just these overhead lights. They weren't very bright. So I'm doing a whole series of shots, and I ask them to lift their flowers up. Let's go back out in the lobby. It's about time. It's about time. Everybody's there, getting ready, getting ready. They walk down the aisle, sit down, walk down the aisle, hug, walk down the aisle. You can tell there's a second flash off to the left. Uh, normally at the ceremony I do not do two flashes but I thought this was such a small controlled environment what the hell is I think it's one of the first times I've ever done that you can see the flash way off to the left okay this pictures are kind of out of order you know I've got my camera synced but they're uh, oh no they're in order I'm sorry they are okay the bright oh no sorry this is before this okay so it's a little off, not bad. <laughs> this is the, the groomsman ready to walk down the aisle, and I got the 70 to 200. That should be back a little bit. Okay, so walking down the aisle. So this one here is a little bit off by about two minutes, a minute maybe. Okay, so there we go. I want to go back a bit to show you here. You see Travis right here? Travis is shooting video. He got a beautiful video of that couple, that moment. Okay, this is going back a bit. Again, it's a little out of sync. 
but this is her him seeing her for the first time okay and now this is the actual ceremony she's looking kind of nervous I just shoot pictures of people 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 lots of people lots of candid shots lots of black and whites Lots of black and whites. The parents, parents, 70 to 200. I move to the front, 24 to 70. 70 to 200. 70 to 200. They do the rose ceremony. Pictures of the roses close up. And now they're married. They kiss. They sign. They're taking pictures. I always love doing this one if I can, which I can on most weddings. If they're signing, the priests or whoever can't see me, so I sneak in behind and I go, can you guys just turn your heads and look at the camera? Because I want to get that shot of everybody in behind. I think it's an awesome shot. And then I'll get some, maybe some like this here of them signing with the 70 to 200. And then while the best man and maid of honor are signing, I often they're often doing stuff. The bride and groom is just having a good time talking and laughing and kissing. And I'll get the musicians, if they're there, I'll get close-ups of their instruments. Then they're leaving. They're all leaving. And I'll do the, yay! And they're going to do a receiving line, so I get a lot of candid shots, 7,200. They got married early. We had a lot of time. It was a small crowd. And I, nah, I said, you know, if you want to do a receiving line, yeah, that's fine. Let's, let's get her done. Then I did the formals with the umbrella. I set it up. Okay, just quick shots, grandparents alone, grandparents with the bride and groom, grandparents alone, grandparent with the bride and groom, parents, parents with family, family, parents, son, uh, the boy, her brother, the other family, another family without the bride, and the parents, and both parents. I don't normally do this. They, somebody brought it up. I'm like, okay, we'll do both parents. Okay, and this was a very close friend, I think a godmother. And then I just went by the window. I did a couple of traditional shots uh, by the window. And then we went outside to the park. And we got these. It's freezing cold, but it's not windy. So uh, no, there's no additional light here. Uh, just overexpose it a little bit because the sun is at the, 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 the snow is reflecting a lot of light into the shadows. That's what I like about shooting in the snow. So you don't have to worry about it as much. Otherwise, I'd have to compensate. So I asked, I asked the guys to step in the snow. You notice that? The guys are in the snow. I did that on purpose. Yeah, I saved the girls the trouble. And then I asked the guys to leave. I said, come on, guys. Come on over here. Then I had the girls just walking, and I did a whole series of shots just with the girls. And then I did another candid shot, sort of, sort of casually posed. I had the guys give up their jackets, warm up the girls. Okay, this is with the 24 to 70. Then I shoot back with the 70 to 200, compress it a little more. Then I get a bunch of the 70 to 200 with the bride and groom. You can see the frost coming out of his mouth. Okay, so I'm doing a whole series of shots. The sun, you'll notice the sun. See the shadows, the sun's placed behind them. Uh, I did that on purpose. That's the angle that I wanted. I wanted that lighting, it's the best. To me, anyways, it's just, it works. So I did a whole series like this, looking at each other, kissing, looking at the camera, kissing. Okay, some are her alone, some cool uh, Photoshop techniques, which I hope to show you in a minute. Now let's fire up the off-camera flash, and we'll get a couple extra shots and uh, put the sun in the picture. That's all I did. I just had one, ca one flash off to my left. Okay, that's all I have, and we're just firing away some cool angles. And they got their scarves, and they get a couple of the bride alone with off-camera flash as well. Sun, the sun's in the picture. Again, these are these are all manual. When I, as soon as I get that off-camera flash going, I tend to go very much into manual mode. So we're going to we got in the cars, we left, went downtown, go to a pub. So they're all coming out of the cars. We're going into the pub. We're going to get some pub shots. Okay, we're all having a beer. Gets, I'll get up on the table, shoot down. Yay! Uh, there's a nice window light coming in. They got a couple of the bride and groom with the pub in the background. Get them outside, do a thank you shot. Get them out in the street. Street, 
70 to 200, 70 to 200 with the reflector. Go back inside, get another shot of the dudes, and let's go to an alternate uh, wall, and we get some more of them. Get them running, <laughs> and the girls are freezing. They're done. They're done. So they're joking around here, going for a pee. <laughs> Okay, I get one more of the bride and groom. Just one more, because I love the light, the way it was kicking in. So I just wanted to get another one. I get paranoid, you know. I think, oh, I don't have enough of the bride and groom. Let's get some more. I probably annoy people more than I need to. So I get to the hall. It's early. Remember, we got lots of time. They got married at 2. There's nobody in the hall, so I'm going to grab some hall shots. And there's these blue lights lighting up the hall. Okay, so I got the 14 to 24, just using that camera. It's a beautiful lens. And then remember I talked about this earlier? This is how I lit this bridal party shot. So I did a whole series. Then uh, uh, was it the groom's sister had a baby, and he was asleep earlier. So she showed up, and I said, let me get a quick shot of the three of you. And then we went back to this. Okay, same lighting. Just did a whole series. And I moved the... Uh, SB 800s that were over here, I moved them over to this wall, the opposite wall, and I just shot from the opposite side. And then remember I showed you the lamp? That's where I did these shots. I'm just horsing around. I'm having fun. I'm just doing these artsy-fartsy extra shots for them. You know, I have time. Let's do it. Let's work it. Okay. And then there was a sign up on the uh, hall. And I did a picture of them coming in. Two flashes coming opposite sides, them coming in. And I instructed the bridal party, please, when you come in, I mean, really ham it up when you get to the dance floor. Don't, don't stop and just walk to, your, walk to your positions. You can see the flash up here, okay, and there's the bride and groom. I got video of them dancing, too, so in their slideshow, there's video. All right, I'm going to cruise through these. Uh, detail shots, de uh, cake, 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 detail shots, detail shots. There's that pose I was telling you about, super wide. And I get a shot of the bridal, the whole bridal party. I got the two flashes on either side, and then there's the uh, wine. I burned that in a lot because major cleave issues going on there. And then I asked them, I said, do you guys want to, like after the first course was served, I, and, the, you know, the... The, the guests were still being served the first course, but they were done. I said, Can you want a quick shot, just a pose shot by, by the cake? And they said, yeah. So I did one. And then I did a table shot. I love doing table shots. It's just one camera on flash, one on, you know, SB900 with the diffuser, tilted down a little bit, so a lot of, a lot of bounce light going on. 14 to 24, I'm just going around. I got a picture of everybody at the reception. I love doing those. I have a lot of fun. I get along great with people. I have a lot of fun doing these, and they understand it, and I get a quick shot. I think it's a really cool shot to get for their wedding album. Then another detail shot, detail shot, some more of uh, the tables. There's that shot I was talking about earlier with the off-camera flash using the onboard flash. And that was it. So that was the whole wedding. I think this wedding here was about you know, 540 images. Let me just see, 527, that's what they got. And she actually picked those up this afternoon, and she was ecstatic, absolutely ecstatic uh, about the results. So um, let me do some workflow. You guys ready for some workflow? And then uh, we're going to call it, uh, we're going to call it a wrap. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, running late here. We're on to two hours, I think, right? We started at, uh, we started at what? 805. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody asleep yet? I hope I'm not boring anybody. <laughs> this is do you not. Have any pro do you have any problems with uh, with guests taking photos, like when you're doing the formal photos? Do you uh, do anything with that? Does not bother me at all. You know. They don't distract your people. No. Well, I tell them. Uh, I joke about it. You know. I'll say, "Okay, guys, I want if I'm doing a group shot and the, all these people bring up cameras, I don't want to. I just don't want to worry about it." Because I know mine are going to be infinitely better, and I'm getting paid lots of money. I say to the bridal party, if let's say three people show up beside me, or one guy shows up beside me, or whatever. 
I'll say to the bridal pair, I'll say, okay, guys, I want you to look at me, okay? Ignore everybody else around me. And I'm kind of joking, like, and they get it. They get it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, okay. And then, then I'll, I might say to the guy beside me, I'll say, look, you know what? Why don't I do my shot first, and then you can do yours? And they're like, oh, okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a bastard when it comes to that because I'll do the shot, and I'll say, all right, that's good, guys, I'm done. And then the, the, the group starts to break away. And then I let him handle it. Hey, you're on, man. And so if it's Uncle Joe with his camera, he's got to now go reassemble the group that started to totally ignore him. And he can't, he can't, it's just like a mess, you know? So he gets yeah. a mess shot. I, I'm a bit tricky that. I do, I do the same thing. You know what it's all about, man. Yep. All right, so here we have, I'm just going to show you some of these. Maybe I'll do one or, one or two of the, all right. All right, so here we have, this is my half resolution question. My camera half resolution gives me a 10.613 by 7, uh, 300 uh, pixels. Okay, that's what, you know, I end up with. That To me, that's plenty. So I size it down to speed things up. It's just a habit I got into years ago. I could probably shoot, I could probably shoot full res, but it's just a habit I got into. So now my workflow, I'm old school. You'll notice how I, I went into Explorer. Now when I'm working a wedding, uh, I'll download everything in Explorer, and then I'll individually go through them in the preview, right arrow, right arrow, and I'll decide which are keepers or not. It takes me 20 minutes to go through an entire wedding, and I'll just go delete or not delete, just delete. I'll just go through the whole wedding. Once I got my selections, I may delete a few more later, okay, but this is my finals. I'll go rename them so they're in order of 0001. I don't worry about it beyond that. Some end up getting deleted, and nobody really cares. Nobody's ever brought it up. I don't make a big deal about it. Okay, so that's how I edit it down. My rough edit is done that way. Okay, and 99% of these shots are what I'm, I'm probably not going to delete any that many more. So what I do is I go here. I used to use File Browser a lot, but our main workflow computer is in the studio. And I select two rows, and I just grab all those, and I just open them in Photoshop. Boop, they all open up, and then I do my workflow. I decide on what I'm going to do with each individual image as I go through them. So when I'm done, let's see how, let's, how many we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, just look at the bottom. 26 are selected. Once I'm done uh, 26, uh, I just go grab 26 more. I just work in series like that. That's how I work through my weddings. Now I know some of you guys are doing the raw processing and some of you guys are doing different stuff and you're using the Lightroom. I've got into this habit in 2001. This is how I started doing it back then and I just honed it a bit from there. Uh, to me using Lightroom and presets is the same as using actions. I mean really it's the same end result. But with Lightroom, you can go a little faster because you can select a whole crap load of images. Well, I like to look at each image individually and decide. I like to fine tune it, okay, so that they, you know, they get a kind of a custom, a custom uh, look. So I'm gonna because I'm on my laptop, I'm gonna do a workshop workflow this in uh, Photoshop Seven. To me, it does not matter Photoshop Seven, CS, whatever, does not matter. The same actions apply. I have not deviated much in the years from uh, my workflow. I've really, really kept it very, very consistent uh, in so far as how I've, uh, what, what effects I've, I've really done. A few variations, uh, a few changes here and there. And the first of which is I used to have an action that basically increased the saturation, increased the contrast, and just snapped the image up a little bit. And I, I, I don't know, I got a new laptop once and I, I couldn't find that action so I got kind of lazy and what I did was I have uh, Craig's actions right so I just said you know what what's this look like so I went and grabbed Craig's uh, portrait popper okay and I created a a, a, a thing a shortcut whoops I hit the wrong button here there we go oh, I did it again I'm trying to find control F5 here or is it F6 there. Okay, I just fired that action. You see? You see it in the history? By the way, that's my palette. I, I still, in CS whatever, I still 
work with uh, history auctions and wires. That's all I work with. Okay, so I just ran Craig's auction, and it just snapped it up a little bit. You can create one. It's really easy. A little bit of contrast, a little bit of uh, saturation. It's just to give the image a base layer. Now, I'll look at an image like this, and almost always will go soft focus on an image like this. Okay, so, or I'll create an effect. Now, I, I have Rob's faves right here, and I have uh, Craig's actions. See, I've got Craig's One Hit Wonders, and I have uh, Design House from Andy Armstrong's actions as well. And I use them occasionally if I want to get a certain additional effect, and I'll show you that in a minute. But an image like this, I'll run the NoBS software or the HajiSoft, or I'll use Craig's action, which is, uh, well, here, I'll, I'll just fire it. Porcelain Soft Skin. You notice how soft that is? And I, I get to erase some of that soft away. Okay? There we go. Now, if I like that, that's fine. I'll just Control S saves it. Control W, or on a Mac, it's Command, I think. Control S, Control. My fingers are always, always, always using shortcuts. So I look at an image, though, so if I want to have, let's say I want to add an effect to this. I'll go to, let's say, let's go to Andy's uh, action. Let's try the Rose Punch. Okay, and I'll go like that, and I'll go, ooh, uh, it didn't work the way I planned it to. Let's maybe just decrease it a bit. Okay, I, I might like that. It's nice and snappy. Okay, so let's add that to it. Or uh, maybe I want uh, the fade punch is kind of nice. I like these ones. So the ones I'm showing you are, are my design house favorites. They're really cool. All right, so it's kind of similar, and I'll have to decrease that a little bit. So it's kind of similar. It depends on the image. You'll get different effects. But I have these actions that I work with over and over and over again. And so an image like this, uh, definitely go with a soft focus. So I'll, uh, do I have to flatten this? Yes, I do. So I'll sh control, shift, uh, W, no, E. I don't even know what it is because I, I automatically, yeah, control, shift, E flattens. You notice that? Layer, you can flatten the image right here. Shift, control, E. And then Control S, Control W gets rid of it. Okay, okay, just like this. Normally that doesn't show up because I would have uh, run a, the initial action first of all. So it works pretty fast. So I'll look at an image like this here. That's the same one you saw earlier. Okay, I'll run my basic action on there, Craig's action, and maybe I want a little bit of detail in the shoe. So I'll duplicate the layer. I have an action for that, so it saves me time. I'll go to screen. Wow, look at that detail now. Okay, let's let's erase that background back in. Okay. Now flatten. Okay. See I flatten that. And in this image here, this is about the only time I use a plugin is Topaz. I love Topaz. I have I have a shortcut for it as well. Uh, but don't do shortcuts with Topaz because there's a lot of options until you really know it and you know which one you like. So I'll try, usually I'll go to Photo Pop, you know, before and after, Portrait Drama, uh, Dramatic, Small Details, or Details. <coughs> it's usually one of those. All right, let's go to Portrait Drama. I'll click OK. And if I find it's a little bit too much, I'll just hit Shift, Control, F, and fade it back. Okay, you all know where that was, right? That's here. Fade, Shift, Control, F. Okay, and if I'm happy with that, that's good. Control, S, saves, Control, W, excuse me, <coughs> Control, W, sorry, Sean, Control, W, uh, closes. Okay, I have an action to rotate. We've got the bride, we've got the suns flaring out right on the lens. I don't care. I did that on purpose. Let's run Topaz. See, I can go run the last step right here. I can go to Control F, or I can go. Now, when I'm working a wedding, it's like three hours max. Okay, look at that. That's kind of cool. Let's go with that. Don't overdo the Topaz, by the way. It's a big mistake to overdo it. Okay, now let's run one of these actions over here. So I use the basic uh, workflow action, and then I'll... Uh, uh, for the creative images, I'll just do some fun stuff, like what I'm about to show you. 
When I'm doing pictures of, like, say, the family shots, I'm just that basic uh, workflow I showed you earlier, and that's it. I mean, I'm just, boom, 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 one after another. I'm pump, let's go with Polar Monkey here, see what that looks like. There we go, that's kind of funky. Might have to go in here and reduce that effect. Okay, that's kind of that washed out look. Okay, I'm going to flatten, Control S, saves, and let's delete it. Okay, same idea here. Okay, let's say I want to burn it around a little bit more. Well, I can go with a burn, or I can duplicate layer, multiply. And again, I have an action for this, so I normally wouldn't do it the old way. Okay, let's uh, decrease the size. I think this image here, let's flatten that. You notice I flattened it. I notice the, uh, this image will look good with topaz. Maybe a little hint. So a lot of detail shots look good with topaz, okay? I, I don't use it on a lot of portraits. Uh, family stuff, just when I want to pull out a lot of the details and give it a funky, funky look. Okay, maybe we'll uh, just kind of do that. Okay, I'm not going to save that. Okay, basic workflow. There, I ran Craig's action. And if I have uh, the girls, I want to do a good job on these girls because they are my allies. And they're going to, I mean, that's the first thing they're going to think about when they go to sit down to to look at these images. So I, I retouch, retouch, low uh, opacity, low 20s. I'm just, uh, I spend a little more time. Okay, I find it, you know, it gets a little bit annoying. I spend a little more time on the portraits like these, but I, it's worth it. It's really, really important that I dodge the eyes. Okay. And sometimes I got to go in and she got a little bit of redness in there. So I'm going to dodge that out. Okay, I want the girls to look good. That was not the right tool. What the heck just happened here? All right, I don't know. Something happened. That's nah, all good. All right, so the redness is away. Maybe I'm going to dodge that just a little more. There we go. Excuse my nose. Okay, now I have an action for her teeth. I'm just going to select. And all it is, I'm not going to run the action, but I have an action that does this. Selective color, whites, knock out yellow. Okay, control D, deselects, and I'm done my basic workflow. Now sometimes I'll run that action again. The one uh, basic workflow action, it just adds a little extra snap, or I'll open up my curves and just give it a little more Bada boom, bada bing. I want that to look glamour doll. Now I'm going to run the Nobs uh, uh, Hajisoft, which I have an action for, and it's a few steps. You know, it's going to ask me to set the blur. The blur. I, I was going to say glur. That's when you try and say G and blur in one word. Sean. Yeah. You know, if you say gullible really slow, it sounds like green peas. <laughs> Try it. No, I'm not that gullible. Okay, shut up. Okay, go away. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the Hajisoft, which is uh, all our members at NoBS Photo Success have this action is included. And I'm erasing some of that soft away. Okay, so there you go. And that's how I want the girls to look from that. See, it took me, what, a minute, minute and a half? And I work a little bit faster when I'm not uh, being stared at by a bunch of, whole bunch of people. So, anyways, and if I want to go black and white, by the way, um, I just go saturation, decrease. That's all I do. I uh, you know there's better ways. Give me a break. I haven't, I, I really, really beg to differ as to whether or not there's a true huge difference in tonal range from one black and white to another. I've heard of plugins. Uh, Perhaps I should look into this some more. But when I understand the science and theory behind it, it just does not click with me. Um, because, uh, you know, if you desaturate, it may go a little bit flatter, but you can fix that with contrast, you know. That's, that's all you got to do. But that's how I do most of my black and white. Uh, I do have another black and white action, which, uh, let me just run it here. It's, it uses... Uh, Okay, let me go back a bit more for you guys. Whoop. Boo, boo, boo. All right. All right, the other action uses the channels. I, 
I, I the lab. It uses lab. Okay, and I and I use it once in a while. I just find it's very snappy, so it's only for certain images. So it goes from there. You go into lab color. You select the canvas, and uh, uh, well, okay, I'll show you if I can remember. I may not remember. Does anybody know how to do this? Channels. Okay, there's your channels, right? You got to go. Um, there's something I'm missing, right, Sean? Yeah, the, the channels is a different type of black and white conversion. Yeah. Um, well, usually how do you the green channel is the one you use for that. I, I went into each one, so I'm going to go into red. Okay, I'm going to go select all, and then I'm going to hit backspace, which is going to delete it, I think. I could be wrong here. <laughs> I, I did the action, and I knew I used to know how to do it, but now that I use the action so much, I can't yeah, remember. But anyways, right. it's using lab. Yep, there's the, the, well, the lab color is actually up in um, mode, which is under, uh, is it edit or image? I can't remember. Yeah, image. You switch it to lab mode. There. Thank you. That's yeah. what you do. So you go here, mode, go into lab mode, and then you go here. Right? You go Control A, selects everything, and then you backspace, you delete. Then you go back here, you backspace, it deletes. Then you go back up to here, okay, and you go deselect back into um, RGB. Yeah, I go to RGB, I think. Something You're doing happened. some weird stuff here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was close, back though. To the action. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, that's how it works. You go into lab, and then you go ahead and go back to the thing, and you get it all done. So it's just another way to go black and white. I barely use it. Okay. All right. Shoes. Um, topaz. And this is a classic topaz shot. Okay, that looks good. I would look at that, and I go, that's awesome. Let's duplicate the layer. Boom. Multiply. Okay. Erase. Let's erase some of that out. That's good. Let's flatten. That's good. Save. Bye-bye. All right, let's run this little one here. Okay, basic action. Let's go to Topaz. This is just dying for Topaz. Okay, oh, look at that. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, it's got an edginess to it, right? So we're going to go with... Hmm... I should have gone with the first one. All right, that works. I'm going to just fade that back a little bit. Okay, um, duplicate layer. Let's run a duplicate layer. And we're going to go to multiply. Okay. And erase. Okay, we're going to flatten. Okay, one cool technique I like to do, go to saturation. Make it half black and white, half color. Does it get any simpler? Half black and white, half color. That's all I did. Let me show you again. I went to here, brought the saturation down to half. Okay, now it's a quarter color, quarter black and white, because I've done it twice. Okay, so from here to here to here. Kind of looks cool. It's edgy. It's got a little bit of color to it. It's almost like a, a music video, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, off in outer space here. So... That's how I do my workflow, and, and there ain't much more to it. Um, I can probably show you, oh, I think that's it. I mean, I use the two soft focus, and that's it. Uh, I split it up between the two. If I'm doing a portrait, I use the, uh, I use the, uh, Haji soft. I'm going to just open up some more. We're almost done here, folks. Oh, man, this has been a long time. All right, and I just want to run this action. You fall asleep there, Sean? No, not at all. This is good stuff. Oh, thank you. Coming from you, a guy who knows everything, I'm, like, impressed. <laughs> no, really, you do. Oh, I didn't know that. Sean's a smart dude. All right, here's an action from Design House. I like this one. It's, his, it's called a HDR. I mean, he calls it that. It's not true HDR. And it does wonky stuff. I don't know why it does those lines. It always does that to me. And I have to go in and erase them out. See? 
Now, that probably was not a good image to do HDR on, but darker, moodier images work much, much better. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do that. A little more contrast. I have an action for that, by the way. <laughs> I have an action for that. <laughs> Green beans. <laughs> My, one of my daughter's friends told me that. My daughter told her that at one time. All right, I, I would run a soft focus on that. That's uh, Craig soft focus, and there we go. Okay, what other one did I miss? Uh, the, all these are design house. They're all different effects. See, look at that. That's cool. you got to go in here and decrease it if you don't like it. Okay, or not. Let's go back. Let's try a Hunky Monkey. Hey, that's... Uh, that's Sean's nickname, by the way, Hunky Monkey. <laughs> Is that what your wife calls you? Sorry. Uh, no. Oh, no, she calls you Ape Man. Uh, no, maybe Hunky Monkey is better. <laughs> <laughs> so you got all these different effects, and, and these are all Design House actions. You know, I'm just plugging uh, uh, Design House. I don't even think uh, Andy knows I'm doing this. And they're all different effects that create that look, you know? What's that look, Sean? It's kind of it's kind uh, of weird. A lot of it looks yeah, like old cross processing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, duo tones. Some of it looks like old faded, old faded film shots, which I find so bizarre that that look. <laughs> you know, especially like the polar monkey. It's just like, you know, it's like old faded film. Like layers of color have gone off. So you can go in here and you can start erasing you know, certain parts back into the image. So anyways, do you, uh, do you actually do, do you actually do a lot of this kind of stuff on your weddings? Uh, the stuff I'm showing you is more specialized. It's just some of these images I would throw a small series. Now I showed you the wedding and you saw how many I added. It was not that many, right? And you saw how many right. off-camera flash shots I added. Not that much, okay? You know, so uh, just a small selection. I wouldn't add it to all the images. It just wouldn't look right, would it? No, not at all. So let me try Fade Punch here. You know, there's a real, it's just all about knowing the basics of Photoshop and uh, knowing how to work the tones and using the basic tools. And uh, this is it. History actions, layers, and, and I use a lot of the same actions over and over. I use the one plugin, uh, pretty much. Not for all. Question on that. Which which Topaz do do you have? It's called Sorry, Topaz sorry. Adjust. Okay. okay. And it's about thirty forty dollars. That actually looked good. I added a little Topaz to it, and you can see it actually looked pretty good. Okay, but you don't want to overdo it with Topaz. No, you could take an image like this, by the way, and you look at it and go, okay, I want to pull out some more of those tones, go to multiply, and it'll do that for you. And, you know, you want to erase some of those shadows back there. See? That's a great way, by the way, if you have an old faded image, you scan it, and then you just duplicate the layer and go into multiply, and it'll pull out tones that are, uh, are, uh, almost invisible. Let me show you how I do sepia, by the way. I do do some sepia. Colorize 25-25. Uh, and I got an action for that. <laughs> hey, buddy, have I got an action to sell you. That's my action. It's just, okay, let me show you again. Go here. Colorize 25-25. That's it. That's my sepia. Now, if I want half sepia, okay, I'll run the action. You know what I'm going to do, right, Sean? Control-Shift-F. Or, yeah, Shift-Control-F, 50%. Half action, that's half sepia. Hold on. <coughs> okay, that's my half sepia. No magic, nothing required. Okay, if I want black and white, I just black and white. Okay, and you'll notice it went a little bit, went a little bit dull. Let's just... You know, add some contrast to it. Now we're losing our tones in here, so we've got to be careful not to over-process it. So, you know, that's it, but in a nutshell, and for to do this wedding, three hours. And I don't do sit down and do it all at once. I'll go in and, and uh, I'll 
20 minutes. Then uh, another day I'll go 40 minutes. And uh, another, I, I enjoy doing my weddings. If I'm really, really slammed, I'll get our, our girl that works for us and I'll say, look, I'm, I can't do this. You have to finish it for me. I just can't do it. I'm out of time. But normally I do 99% of the weddings or 90% of the weddings. And I enjoy it. To me, it's the dark room, and I get to be very, very creative, and I get to revisit the, uh, I get to revisit the uh, wedding again. So, so I want to let you guys know for who are not members, if you go to nobsphotosuccess.com. Oh, wait a minute before I go. Let me just before you guys leave here. I don't know how many people are still with us. If you want to see the wedding page uh, of the wedding that I just showed you, Aaron and Chris, go to westmountphotography.com. Aaron and Chris. Don't all go now. I mean, write it down. That, that website's going to be up for months. We tell our brides and grooms. They get those free uh, cards that they hand out at the reception, and they get the, uh, the guests know about this website. Now the guests of this wedding, and you guys all know about it, so shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, but she was pretty cool. She wouldn't mind. So westmouthphotography.com forward slash Aaron and Chris, and you can see what my brides and grooms see. Okay, And in this case, I created two slideshows. I always create an Animoto quickie quickie slideshow just for the this page, and I also create a long 40-minute DVD that the bride and groom get to take home on a nice a nice case and all that. I showed you all that at the last webinar, but I was horsing around with this you know HDR stuff or uh, Fusion, and uh, I created a uh, this is a YouTube version. It's 20 minutes long. On the bottom is the YouTube version. On the top is the Animoto version. Okay, you can go see what the, my guests and brides and grooms see. And it's part of my regular website, but it's hidden. I mean, you know, I, I want to drive people to my website by doing this as well. It's an extra benefit for the bride and groom. But, you know, people go here, they'll see my photos of the month, they'll subscribe for my newsletter, see the special offer, another slideshow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to see Aaron and Chris's wedding, go to westmopdography.com forward slash Aaron and Chris. Okay, so hopefully you all got that. Write it down. It's going to be up for many, many months. I actually typically leave these up for years. I don't go clean it out. Okay, so anybody got any questions? And if you want to join No BS for a buck, you can join for a buck. Uh, Sean is uh, helping me moderate uh, the new people who come in, so him and I will greet you. Uh, you have to follow the instructions. When you go to that website, it's very, very important that you don't miss any steps. A lot of people do, and they email us and go, well, I didn't get in. you got to click the link that says finalize your order, and you got to go register because another link will show up, and, and you know it doesn't happen on its own. Sean, does anybody have any questions for me? Um, and on, um, on that same note there, when uh, the forum emails them back to confirm their email address, yeah. if they don't see that right away, make sure you check uh, the spam folder because sometimes, especially Gmail, it'll throw it in there. We need to get that uh, email confirmed. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't. I never even get a notice that somebody joined the forum. Damn that Gmail! So <laughs> I know it. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's Google again. I knew it. Um, <laughs> Josh Klein would really like some tips for uh, for larger brides. Uh, get the get the bride facing away from the light and turn her kind of into light so she's shadowed. Uh, short light. I sh yeah, short lighter. Um, I mean, obviously, she's the center of attention. So, you know, watch the back fat thing, you know. Uh, try and get some nice – I showed you some larger girls earlier, and uh, to me – I'll go back to those right now because I know exactly where they are. To me, uh, uh, nice to get some of her – nice shots of her alone. Nice rim lighting. Here we go. There we go, right there. See? Rim lighting. This girl is big. She's big. And I get her chin pulled out. You see the lighting? The shadow side to the camera? Here. This girl is large. She's, you know. And, um, get that light falling, sort of just kind of really highlighting the beauty of her face. And I got the veil strategically placed. Uh, here I'm shooting down. And here I'm hiding her. So for the portraits, you could do that. Other than that, I mean, you just got to watch the back stuff, and you really got to uh, just go with it because it's going. She's going to show. Make sure she's having a good time, and make sure she's comfortable with you. Really, I hope that helps. You know, tell her she's beautiful. 
That's right. <laughs> um, do you uh, ever do much liquefying in Photoshop? Uh, sometimes a little bit, but you know, if, you, if she's a large girl and you got to do that with every shot, it's going to drive you crazy. But if there's uh, I, not much, just to kind of tuck the waist in a bit. On some key shots, I will once in a while, but not that often. So, I, I didn't really get into a lot of Photoshop, but you know what? There's not a lot that I do. I mean, you saw it, and I'm just my my hands are firing those actions and shortcuts uh, just by habit, and uh, it allows me to get creative to the degree I, I need to and want to, and I get the job done. And each each image is customized, so. Black and white sepia, half sepia, or some of those funky effects from Design House, or the soft focus from uh, Craig's actions. Any other questions coming through? Uh, I had one earlier. Uh, somebody wanted to know what you do, or if it's ever happened to you, um, if you ever have a problem bride, a bride you just can't make happy. Oh. Um, I wish I did, and I, 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 I hear of it. Um, I heard of horror stories. I, I'm convinced, and this is going to really sound, this is going to sort of sound arrogant of me. I've heard of stories, weddings that I've shot, where the video guy never got paid, and they treated him like crap. And But they treated me like a prince. And I was like, well, why the hell did that happen? So I'd be talking to the video guy, and i go, well, why didn't you get paid? Did you get a deposit? And they're like, no. I, well, they got a deposit, but they gave them the DVD, and they didn't get the final balance. And I'm like, well, no wonder. I mean, so it's almost like as if if you charge enough money and you command respect, they will give it to you. You know what I mean? And that videographer in that one case did awesome work. It was not a question of his work. This guy was movie quality. This guy was very skilled. And they just they just crapped all over him. But he also had that going against them and he had you know he just didn't have what I consider to be a success attitude for lack of a better word so does that sound arrogant or cocky of me to say that when they respect you they I've just seen it I've seen it happen where I, I hear stories or sometimes I see the bride crapping on a vendor or somebody else turn around and come to me and sweet as pie it's like as if she's saying you know what I don't take crap from those guys. And from, from you, I'll take crap from Rob. Let's go. <laughs> it, I, it's all about setting expectations, I think. Yeah. Now, if you're starting out and, wow, you got Bridezilla on your hands, you know, you got to really try and work with her and be let your confidence shine through and, and be uh, courteous and, and get through the day. You know, and if you didn't get paid for it, yeah, okay, that may become an issue down the road, but hopefully you did get paid for it, and and you get through all that. Okay, I mean the worst that I can remember was when James was working for us back in 2002. We started this protege program, where I would hire James out to shoot a wedding because he was just starting out, and they would get a reduced price. Okay, so we booked out a couple of those. And one wedding, the girl was a, a negotiator, a buyer for Costco. And I didn't know that that attracted, or she had that skill set of negotiating. She was a shark. You know, she came, she, she looked like a goldfish, but she was a shark. And, uh, but she was nice, nice. And then, then I sent James to the wedding, and, and James came back, and he almost had a nervous breakdown. I asked him one day about Julia Gulia. Julia Gulia. That's what he calls her. He's like, to this day, he'll have nightmares about her. You know, she she just was a terror. And that, that was her her personality, and I think she prayed on the week and because she got a reduced price from our protege program. So, you know, gotcha. it probably reinforces what I just said. You charge enough money, you command enough respect, you'll A, avoid them in the first place, or if they happen to be a bridezilla, they will transform into somebody who will tolerate you and be very pleasant to deal with. So, yep. I got to mention, Sean. There's a ton, a ton, a ton of videos of me on location at weddings, of James on location at weddings in the forum. Tons of them. You know, I followed him around on weddings. Two weddings, I followed him around from start to finish, 
and videotaped and documented everything. And you all know James is an awesome photographer. Almost, almost as good as I am. Almost. <laughs> you taught him everything. No, he actually shines, and he does an incredible job. But, you know, I learn a lot from t training guys like that, and I look at him, and I go, man, he took that knowledge, and he went to the sky and beyond. So, uh, And I learn. I learn from teaching guys like that, and I learn from what he creates, and I go, oh, my God, I never thought of that. James, wow. You know, and uh, from everybody, from Sean, from all the other members, and from my assistants. Yep. You know, you got to be open to learning and knowing how to connect and be creative with lighting and composition and the moments and the emotions and everything like that. So uh, it's really a, a whole lot of layered dimensions. I want to see how many people. There's 125 people still with us. Well, I, yeah, uh, I, got, I have more questions for you, too. Well, you guys are tough, man. <laughs> um, how, do you, uh, how do you meter? Do you spot meter, matrix? Center weighted. I'm always matrix, whatever that that thing is on the camera. Okay. So, but that's you know when I'm using aperture priority, right? Right. Yeah. Because yeah, manual doesn't matter. Yeah. Any other questions then? Um. Do you do any sort of uh, color management? Um. Calibrating anything like that? Other than custom white balance. Well, like on your monitor. Oh, yeah, our, our monitors are calibrated, yeah. You know, that's almost, you know, so standard yeah. nowadays. We have yeah. one of those things that I, things that calibrates it. And, you know, I just look at it, looks pretty good. I, If I'm worried, I send the test print to the lab. Right. Uh, and, and Or, you know, I'll print it out because I know the printer is doing a good job and yeah. verify it. Never an issue. Right. It's not like the bride's going to say, you know, Rob, this picture is about five points too magenta. No, um. <laughs> no, I never hear that. I, my, I gotta say, I mean, my brides are pretty happy. Uh, like the one who picked up yeah. that, you know, Erin was in today. She, her husband was sick, so he never came by. But she sat there and watched the whole show, forty-five minutes long. And I peeked my head in the door one time. I said, "How's it going, Erin? Is it all good?" She was like, "I can just hug you right now." You know, that's what she told me. That she was smiling from ear to ear, and that's what you want. So, hey, Rob, can you put that address back on the screen? No. For the $1 sign up? <laughs> you, have, you have to go to this web address to get the, the $1 special. There's no code. There's there's nothing extra. Just go to this particular address <laughs> to sign up. So I think we're done then, right? Um, yeah, i got a few more questions. but um, Okay, go ahead. i got to pee. i got to pee really bad, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can hold it uh, in, man. Oh, good. <laughs> Torture. Do um, you ever have any uh, brides give you a shot list? Do you ask for them? They oft, Sometimes they do. They show up and, uh, you know, they got that list going. And I look at it and I, I tell them. I look at them and I, I say, look, yeah, these are great. I'm going to get up most of these anyways, so no worries. And then I look through it and I say, oh, I see you got – if there's anything out of the ordinary, I'll say, what does this one mean? Uh, and okay. then she'll talk about it and I'll, uh, okay, make sure I get that. I I, I don't – rely on them. I don't use them as a rule of thumb, but every once in a while a bride will show up with a shot list. And that tells me something about her, right? What does that tell me about her? She's cautious. Detail-oriented. Detail-oriented. She wants to make, she wants to get the job done right. She's just, she's just making sure, you know, she's like my sister. My sister's like that. Uh, very organized. On her wedding day, it was like, you know, Everything was exactly precise. To the minute. Yep. And it was good. I mean, I just keep being myself. I keep connecting and bonding with her. And eventually, she, the shot list never comes up again. Um, what kind of, uh, what size reflectors do you use? And do you usually use the silver side, white side? Ever use the gold side? Uh, those two big ones I have are huge. They're, what, seven footers? They're huge. Awesome usually use the white side or the silver side? Hello? Sean? There. Hey, there you are. Oh, I accidentally muted myself. What, how far did oh. I get into that? I thought you went to the bathroom. No. Um, <laughs> I, I'm I didn't, hear anything, I didn't uh, hear anything about the silver or white or gold or anything. Uh, I actually peed my pants. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, then we could take our time then. 
I uh, I was I was saying, and I didn't realize I muted myself on my my headset here. Apologize for that. Uh, they're seven feet. They're big. They're oval shaped. And they're awesome. And one side's silver, one side's white. If it's an overcast day, and I'm in, uh, I'm, I'll shoot with. I'll reflect the silver side up. Uh, the only time I use the matted white side is if I'm reflecting sun, actual sun, not in open shade, but sun onto the actual white. So. Gotcha. You know. Um, do you uh, do you do albums? And if you do, um, how do the brides uh, pick their photos, or do you even let them pick their photos? I let them pick their photos. We use the album Epoca. Did I not put their website up at the start? I thought uh, I did. I don't remember seeing that. I'm going to put that up right now because they're kind of my sponsor. I. Uh, Oh. oh, I lost it. It's gone. Huh. It's gone. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> <sighs> My bad. Yeah, uh, we, we use Album Epoca. In the States, they're available from Albums, Inc. in Canada. It's uh, uh, Album Epoca. I don't know. Just go to Album Epoca or Google it. If, if, you're, uh, if you're a Canadian and you want to carry Album Epoca, Abbas is the dealer, and he will be really, really good to you. Free samples. Just tell him you heard it from me, and he'll give you free samples if you're a legitimate studio to get you set up. It's amazing. But we uh, we tell him, pick 80 images, or we can pick for you. Sometimes they say, ah, you guys pick. Uh, and then they just pick the ones. But most of them say, well, we'll pick the 80 we want, and then we'll do a layout and send them a proof. And that's it. Stephanie is saying it's slide 259. Oh, okay. Uh, how did it get over there? Stephanie's good. <laughs> Thank you. Albumipoca.com. Oh, by the way, big workshop coming up. It's filling up real fast in April, Inferno Workshop. Uh, if any of you diehards are still listening and watching, you want to check us out and hang out three days, I'm there, Sean's there, James Can't is wait. there. Yeah, we always have a blast. And uh, oh, by the way, Sean, we're planning something special. Uh, get ready, we're doing a flash mob. So Monday morning, oh, sweet. Monday sweet. morning, Monday morning, nine a.m. We're gonna we're gonna videotape it for all the people who are not there. They're gonna get to see it in the forum. So we're doing, <laughs> we're doing a flash mob. It's only gonna take like six minutes because you know it's one song, right? But if you want to come and join me at a one-day workshop limited to twenty people, I think there's four spots left, maybe three. Uh, go to uh, ProfitableStudio.com, March 27th in uh, Burlington, which is outside of Toronto. Uh, I've spent a whole one-day workshop at a studio, at uh, Lens Studio down there. So that's $147 if you're interested in that. So anyways, yeah. So there you go. Any more questions? Um, just a little bit more about albums probably. Um, what's the turnaround time, do you know, for album but, polka? Yeah, they're about four weeks. They're in Italy, but they're, they're pretty fast considering. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I cannot say enough good stuff about album polka, okay? Just don't get me started. Just try them out. I really, really, I've searched far and wide, and I really believe they have the best thing going in albums. Value, price, quality, all things considered. So. That's awesome. I met Abbas last year at WPPI. Super nice guy. Yeah, he's really nice. But uh, but but he's uh, he's the Canadian rep, and uh, I think it's somebody else uh, down at Albums Inc. Any other questions? Um, price range on the albums? Uh, wholesale for like a nice nice wedding album, two hundred fifty bucks. Ah, uh, it's cheap. Oh yeah, it's like and you wouldn't believe the quality. It's just stunning. Yeah. 250 bucks and it's just like uh, top quality, beautiful album cover. And if you want to buy a family album or a bridesmaids album, like a mini album, uh, they got these out little cute little versions of the main album. They're called Best Friend uh, Friends. They're like 15 dollars. Oh, that's awesome. 15 bucks for a little tiny album. Uh, it's just the cutest thing. You show that to a bride and she's just like, oh, I want that. And you want to get those into the bridesmaids' purses because they're your next clients. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't do this, but I would if my wife would let me use it as an incentive. So if you get an right. album, I will give you I will give you, you know, ten free uh, or maybe four free uh, best or friends albums. Cost me uh, what fifteen, thirty, sixty bucks, right? Yeah. You know. 
whatever. Or, or I'll say to her, I'll give you four free, and you can buy uh, any additionals for 20 bucks. Make a little, little tiny margin on it. Incentive. Yep. But I, my wife won't let me do that because she wears the pants. And uh, most, <laughs> well, she knows we're going to book it out regardless, so she's, right. being, she's being hardcore. But do you sell albums to all your clients? No. Half our clients, well, yeah. We talked so about this last the last webinar. We do not put albums in our packages, but we do have packages with albums. Is that okay? Did you drop your bong again? No, my wife <laughs> dropped hers. <laughs> she has, she has, yeah. But that so, would be a good incentive, though, to sell more albums, you know? Maybe you could yeah. get a, that percentage higher. Well, if I know a bride is interested in my, me and she's looking at this album, I'll say, look, okay, I'll tell you what, if you book with me, I'll give you this if you book today. Yeah. You know, so an album is one way to go or an album add-on or something. I used to do more of that. I do less of it, but if I had to, I would negotiate. I don't never lower my price. Never, 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 never. When? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Green peas. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but I will throw in goodies, and if I know she wants something, I'll say, I'll tell you what, we'll do this for you, and I'll throw in gifts if you book now. So is that good? Smart. Yeah, I think we got it. We got all the questions. I hope I hope that covers everything. And, again, I want to remind you, the first part of this was much shorter. This was almost three hours long. I was afraid this was going to go this long. Yeah, it's was a marathon. Hoping. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a lot of information, and really, to do it justice, you really got to go of two days. I mean, uh, well, we're yeah. not going to have a two-day webinar, and uh, go watch, if you're a member, go watch the first webinar. Uh, if you're wanting to grow, expand, study, 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 practice, 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 and stretch your imagination, get out of the box, look for new techniques, put your ego aside, and, and move forward. Right, Sean? Absolutely. Ask questions. You know, join the forum. We're all there. If you have uh, have questions, you want answered about this stuff, we can yeah. give you lots more information. It is. It is without a doubt the world's greatest forum. Without a doubt. So, I'm not biased. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sean. For those of you who are members or are going to join, this recording will be in the forum. Hopefully by tomorrow morning, um, as soon as I can get it rendered and downloaded. But you can expect it in there and uh, watch it at any time you want. So thanks for all being here. I appreciate your presence. Sean, I really appreciate you being there, man. You're a good friend to go into battle with. And, uh, and this is the first time I did this. It was, it was good. I think it's a good idea. And, uh, you know, it's awesome that you helped out with the questions. I hope you didn't yeah, mind. Yeah, I did, I did my best. Okay. Well, I did my best. You did, and you you exceeded my expectations. <laughs> oh, sweet! So I, I got that on my report cards. I got two dollars. I'm sending you in the mail. <laughs> That's your pay. How's your How's your grandpa doing, by the way? Oh, he's doing real well. Yeah. Doing for those well. For those of you who don't know, Sean's grandfather was in World War II. He's a vet, and he's a cool He's a cool guy. I met him last yeah. summer. I took my motorcycle and saw Sean. Went and saw Grandpa, and uh, he's uh, got a lot of stories. That guy. Yes, he does. A lot, lot of medals and he had a he had a history. he had a, a German uh, soldier's hat helmet in his kitchen. Helmet, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, <laughs> I got that. One? That guy was my prisoner, and I took the helmet home. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got two hearing aids, and I thought he had hearing problems just from aging. But it turns out he was shot at by a tank. Yeah, and that's what created his hearing problems. He was shot at two times, right? Yeah, same tank. Yeah, boom! Try again, boom! Because he was a he was a machine gunner, and they go for the machine gunner because machine yeah. gunners are dangerous. And uh, but anyway, so I just find that fascinating. So tell him I said hi if you see him again. I will. And I appreciate like that. He asks about you sometimes. He does really cool. Yeah, I'll have to get back down there and see him. Spend more time with him. So. Are we still recording? Yep.